is Mary at the Mary of Yay. And today is Good Friday, March the 29th, I believe. Welcome to my desk. Happy Good Friday. Easter Sunday is coming up. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So today I'm just going to kind of do some art play. I have a beautiful postcard from Legia. Thank you so much, Legia. Hi, Janet Nash. Good good morning or and or good afternoon to you. It should be about noon where you are. Did you do your morning walk with Freddie? <laughs> good morning, good morning, good morning. How? Oh, thank you guys for being so patient with me. I just have not I just was not into streaming this week. I, I did a lot of slow stitching. So we're going to, I'll show you where I am on that. Let me get in here to my channel on my tablet so that I can welcome folks in. I hope you're off to a good weekend. Are you hiding any Easter eggs? Are you hiding any Easter eggs? Of course, I guess that's more for the young ones, but still, still... Let me go to my channel here. Are, are you going to the, um, any Good Friday services today? I probably won't be, but uh, still, it's going to be nice out today here. I am so thankful. I think spring is on its way. Here we go. I got a thread on my elbow. <laughs> Got a thread on my elbow. Let me zoom in just a little more. Good morning, good morning. That's maybe too much. We'll try that. Hi, Becky. Good morning to you. She said, Janet said, we're just back from a muddy walk. <laughs> Did you jump in mud puddles? Hi, Marianne from Denmark. Hello to you. So it must be around noon where you are too. Let me adjust my chat here. Of course, I always click on the clip thing instead of the chat thing. They put them right together. All messages. There we go. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Isn't this a beautiful postcard? This come from Legia. Let me cover up the addresses. She says... Hello, Mary. Wishing you a lovely spring to make art. Oh, thank you. One touch of nature makes the whole world kin. It certainly does. We'll put that with my postcards that are building up over here. I'm going to have to get out the... So I have a few things I want to do right on, right off the bat this morning. I've been watching Becky's been going on with her boho. We might work a little on the boho. I have been sorting out, and I found this cigar box. And let me put this phone in a safe spot where I can get at it. Um, these Sharpies, I'm going to put these Sharpies in my cigar box. However, it says here, boldly marks on paper metal wood ceramic glass rock and canvas it does not say that it marks on plastic but i was having an issue with these i love them they're nice the last time i used them and uh oh it looks like a cap came off of one which one did it come off of oh it came off my tombow marker maybe that will juice up again Gotta put these caps on tight. So what I'm going to try to do with these, I tell you, I'm heading for a craft lunch. Is take the cap off. This happens to be the black one. We're not going to see that, or the gray one. Here, the white one's good. Now they have it marked here, and they have it marked here. What color they are? But when I put it like this and I'm working, I still have to pick it up and turn it around and see what color. So 
Kitty Jen suggested I put a piece of tape around there, but I'm just going to try to see if this will, it marks on it. Now, will it stay? That is the story. They should be doing this themselves when they sell them. That's one of the biggest issues I have with these. Um, now, we'll just see if that will dry. That way, when I reach for them, I know what color that I'm reaching for. But I don't know if it'll dry. Let's do one more, and then we'll check this one. This is a yellow one. Hi, Anina. Good morning, Anina. Good morning, ladies. Early birds. Early, early birds. It goes on there nice. And I don't need it to be beautiful. I just need to know what color I'm reaching for without having to pick up the pen and swirl it around a couple times. And this happens to be the, I guess you could call this the fine point or the medium point. And they make a bold, the big bold ones too. Now, let's see if this dries. Seems to dry good. Doesn't seem to rub off. Well, maybe a little, but not enough to matter. So I'm going to go ahead and this one is black or, or a gray color. Let's see. Yeah, that one's black, so I don't need to color that one. This one is a blue or green. I think it's the blue. So that way, when I reach for these, I'll know what color I'm reaching for without having to stop and figure it all out. Or I'll know generally what color I'm reaching for. And this is just a 10 plus gear. This is another white. No, that's yellow. So do you have any plans for Easter? We're going, um, we're invited to lunch again with my nephew. They like to take us to this nice restaurant. I just generally eat a big salad anyway because I can't have all that stuff with my kidneys. But maybe they'll have some salmon there or some sort of a cod or something that I can have. I don't eat much meat anymore. And I've been doing pretty good. I made a big salad this week. I've been eating off of that salad. So this is a brown, I think. No, how much I'm going to see. Yeah, I can see it's brown. Or I guess it's a lavender. It's either a lavender or a brown. It's hard to tell. I think it's lavender. Or a purple color. So we'll see how long this lasts. Kitty Jen suggested I put a piece of tape there, but I'm saying, well, they're saying these boldly mark on all of these. They don't say plastic, so. This will give me a general idea. I think this phase of life is the worst. When you have to let go and even... Realize mentally you lose your ability in library. Oh, oh, they're talking about um, Aunt Beck's mother. Uh, Becky says, um, let me go up to where she's talking about it. Yesterday I took Scott's mom to 
all these as she only needed eight items, but she had such a hard time understanding me as I drove and come to an intersection and would say, this intersection is, she does not need to be driving anymore. Was she driving? <laughs> Becky said, not yesterday. She had enough sense to call me to drive her there. Oh, that's good. But she does drive places. We had this with my daddy, Janet says. Becky said, I'm just the daughter-in-law, so my input is not appreciated. Aw. We appreciate your input, Becky. <laughs> if you know what I mean, she says. Scott is Scott's mom and his sister are cooking on Sunday. Wow. So you're getting invited out too. This is a pretty green. So she's 96 and she's still cooking. Is this the sister that's from Georgia? It, don't you doesn't Scott have a sister that's in Georgia, if I remember right? Didn't you guys go to visit her one year or a sister? Just about done here. I'm going to put them in here. There's only 10 of them, and this this will certainly hold 10, more than 10, but maybe I'll get more. Maybe I'll get more. Um, I'd like to see them make a, now this is not a complaint. This is a good thing. Uh, I'd like them to see them make a, um, that's a blue color. A really fine point of these. This has got a nice tip to it, but I'd like to see a, 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 a smaller tip. They got the broad, and to me, this is more of a medium Point. But this will help me when I'm reaching for colors to at least know what what hue I'm getting. And got a lot in the cool tones here. Here's a darker green. So I've been doing a lot of slow stitching. I'm working on the journal cover, finishing up my pages. I did bury some fabric this past week. I already want to go out and look at it because we've had some rain. But next week, I think it's supposed to be nice. So I might get out and start raking a little that I didn't get raked last fall so I can use it as garden mulch. This is kind of a goldish orange. The, the red is the only one I have the problem with the color because to me it's more of a pink than a red. I think they're red. They could do a little bit better job with it. This is a pink, a bright pink. But I am pleased that it is drying on this plastic. And it doesn't seem to be scraping off. So I'll probably get more of these, but I need more different colors before I go buying another set. Because if they're the same colors, that isn't going to. And they'll probably do more. See how successful. See, that red to me looks like a dark pink. That doesn't look red to me. And it doesn't look red on the looks pink and red is a primary color so that it isn't like I can mix it I don't know but a lot of companies that do reds um, make pink they say it's red there but it sure isn't red maybe they miss miscapped this one I don't know Seems, this one seems to be soaking in a little. I don't know why. Seems to be soaking in. 
Maybe I need to shake it a little, but it's enough for me to identify it. And the other thing I kind of question, it's not a complaint. I don't know how much, how long these last. I'd like to know about, and this box does not have a latch. So there you go. I'll have to keep it right side up. And then I've got the two bigger ones. Here's the larger white and the larger black. And they do say to store these horizontally. So I'm just going to put this here. Maybe that'll help hold them in. I doubt it. But there we go. Now I can get rid of this. Uh, Janet said, let's see. Becky's saying that Scott's mom is 96. Janet says, Anina, yes, it's a loss of independence for them. Yes, losing your independence. Even when I learned that I need cataract surgery, there were a couple months there that I couldn't drive. And I'll tell you, I sure felt what I had to rely on my brother to take me everywhere. I had to rely on him. It, for a couple months, and I'm going, I want to get in my car and go. Although I don't really go that much. It isn't like I go every day, but not being able to go when you want to go is an issue. I gotta go! <laughs> that has a lot of different meanings. All right. So the other day, several days ago, I put fabric and string in here. And I said, well, in fact, I think it was like a week ago. And I said, Friday, I will pull it out and look at it. Boy, it's really soaked in. We're going to see how dark this is. And I'll probably get my fingers all messy. But let's just pull on it. Come on. <clears throat> And they'll use the, oh, I guess, yeah, I did put fabric in here. But this is the string. So it got really dark, but it usually dries lighter. And I can generally untwist this after it dries. And I'll show you the, I'll show you the ones I, have pulled out and dried. I've stitched a little with them. When I show my slow stitching, I'll show that to you. I'm knocking pins off over here. This looks like the beginning of it. Or it's hooked onto something else here. Is that the fabric that it's hooked on to? I've got a little piece of fabric in here. can squish some of that out. So it looks really dark, but it does dry lighter. How far does that go in? Now what I like to do is take one of these pieces of paper here. Maybe I'll grab two. If I can get a hold of them and kind of blot this to get some of the extra juice out. And it makes a nice painty paper background. Just so that when I move it, there isn't juice falling off all over the place. Let's get the corners here.
and I'll just let this air dry this weekend. Now, I don't know if I'm going to stream Sunday night or not, because we will be going out to lunch, and sometimes I come home really tired. Sometimes I have energy to do it. I'm going to tear another strip off of this and put in there, because I do like the dyed fabrics. Let's tear another strip off. Maybe a couple. And I've been watching a lot of fabric dyeing videos um, from your foods that you have in the house. Like onion skin and I'm ready to buy some more onions. Uh, I did make a big old salad this week, and I had red onion in it, but I didn't think to save the skins. And I don't know how much skin, I would imagine I wouldn't need much to make this much dye. I mean, it's probably about, what, a half cup? I Probably maybe a couple onions would make a nice dye. And I could freeze the onions. Oh, you guys... Uh, I don't know if you remember, but when I was showing that county register, they had a recipe in there for carrot cake muffins. And I uh, decided to make them. And boy, they turned out good. I was afraid because the the dough, you know, when you mix up all the liquid and dry and everything, it was really thick. And it had a cup of oil. It had two eggs. And a cup and a half of buttermilk. But that dough was thick. I, I, I forget how much flour it had. Um, and then, of course, it had like the cinnamon and nutmeg and allspice and carrots. But it was a thick, sticky dough. And I was so afraid that it was they were going to be heavy, but they turned out yummy. And... Uh, my brother, bless his heart. I said, how did you like them? Because I was trying to see, if, should I save this recipe or should I just forget it? And he goes, not bad. Everything, he says, not bad. And I said, well, what does that mean, not bad? Are they good? Should I save the recipes? And he says, not bad means good. And I'm going, well, why can't you just say good? They were good. <laughs> it's just like he can't bear to give me a compliment on my cooking But then it made a big old batch. We made muffins. And I made 16 muffins out of that batch of that recipe. Hold on here. I'm moving things around over here so I can put this in a safe spot. Let's see. What do I have here? Let's put this on this flat piece here. And put that over. Get in there. I guess my pencil cases. Put that over there. Now let me tear a paper towel and get up if any happen to soak through. I don't think it did, but we'll clean my desktop anyway. Oh, so pretty soon we'll be planting and uh, our spring plants, our spring garden. I'm I think I'm going to cut down on my flowers this year and get. Um, this has soap in it. This hand sanitizer. What you're seeing is soap. If you saw any of the streaking, it's pretty clean, my desktop. Um, I think for my flowers, I'm going to get nicer ones and buy fewer of them. I'll probably buy two for the shepherd's hooks out front, two planters. But I think I'm going to try to get nicer ones that I usually pass up because I can't afford, uh, can't afford them. 
and uh, I have so much to take care of them. And but the, when it gets really hot in July and August, I just fade out. And the garden, I'm hoping to mulch a little bit better. But it won't be long, and we'll be needing to get out there until the garden. Okay, what's next, Mary? Um, let's do some slow stitch. Hi, Kimberly. Good morning. And Nina says, I need to ride and look on the street. Let's see what's going on here. Um... Aunt Beck took her mother-in-law grocery shopping. Her mother-in-law actually called. She said she had enough sense to call me to drive her there and back. But she does drive places. I'm just the daughter-in-law. <laughs> if you know what I mean, she says. Scott's mom and her sister are cooking on Sunday. And Nina says, I think this phase of life is the worst. You have to let go and even realize mentally you lose your ability and... Liberty, I think she's saying. Janet says, Anina, yes, it's the loss of independence. Anina says, I used to care for old people with dementia. So even I am young, I see their struggles. Oh. She's driving at 96. It's amazing, Anina says. Scott only has one sister and less. Yes, she's in Georgia. So she's coming up for Easter. You're a lovely daughter-in-law, Becky. Well, she, you're just a lovely friend to have in our art community, Becky. Becky said, she told me yesterday, you're my best daughter-in-law. <laughs> She's so sweet. <laughs> Janet Nash says, I'm unable to drive now. I sold my car. Aw, so that's why you're always taking the, the train. Is it the, do you guys call that a train or a tram over in, in England? That probably wasn't easy, was it? Anina says, I can't drive at all. I'm in Switzerland. You can reach all by public transportation. And in the city, I use my bike. I would like to get a bike. I would like to get a bike, but I'm going to concentrate. And I might get out a little this afternoon and walk because it's going to be nice. It was nice yesterday, but I stayed in the house. I had things to do. <laughs> So I might get out a little this afternoon. Yeah, we don't have public transportation here. You either you either walk or, or drive or catch a ride. We're in a small town in the middle of the boondocks. Becky like said, it's too dangerous to ride a book bike here as everyone is looking at their phones as they drive. I would wish they'd make that against the law. Yeah, uh... That scares me too, Becky. It was bad enough when they weren't smartphones and they were just phones you held up to your ear, but they were still um, portable cell phones. Then they made those smartphones, so you have to kind of look at the smartphone and you're not watching your driving. Here's where Kimberly came in. Good morning, Miss Kimberly or Ms. Kimberly, Mrs. Kimberly. Janet said, Kimberly, good morning to you and little Beefy. Carrot cake has a thick batter. Well, that's good to know, Becky, because I that batter was so thick. I'm going, these are going to be bricks. That's what I said to myself. And I wasn't going to frost them until I tested them because I didn't want to waste the frosting. But they came out nice. They cooked up nice. They actually look like a muffin that you would get at Perkins that you'd pay five or six dollars for um but they made 16 of them and between us two that would be eight muffins a piece so we weren't going to eat that many in one day so my brother said freeze them so i saved out four and i froze and then we had we each had one and uh, i froze the rest of them I let them, I put them in the refrigerator so that the icing would get firm. You know, the icing when you ice it is, is, you know, it's icing. It's not firm. But when you put it in, put them in the refrigerator, that icing will firm up. And then the cupcake liners, 
I I had them in double cupcake liners. So I t after they baked and I frosted them before I was getting ready to freeze them, I took the bottom layer of the pop the cupcake liner and put it on tie top and and uh, put them in the freezer bag that way. I put them in freezer bags because they were nice and firm from being in the refrigerator. Kimberly said, that's a good plan, Mary. It's a lot of work in hot months. Yeah. Yeah, I do think I'm going to uh, cut down on, you know, because I usually get a bunch of petunias and and uh, impatience and that. And while they're nice to have and marigolds, it's, it's a lot of work to water them every day. And in the hot months, I just don't get out there and they suffer and my brother's always nagging at me. You need to water your plants. You spend all that money on them and then they let them burn up. <laughs> and he's right. I did get better with, at it the last couple of years, but uh, I think I'm just going to get get some that I really want and keep them watered. And even if I have to pay a little bit more. And then the other thing I'm thinking for our garden because my brother does not fertilize the garden and the soil is, and he plants his tomatoes in the same place every year. I can't get him to rotate. Well, they do good. Well, they do do good. So he just keeps planting them in the same place. And I said, you need to rotate your crops. He doesn't listen to me. It's his tomatoes. He plants the cucumbers in the same spot every year. <laughs> But I think I'm, you can get some of this, and I see it, always see it advertised in the magazines. This gallon of fertilizer, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna find that ad, and I think that it costs about thirty eight dollars for a gallon, and then you dilute it, of course, like you use a gallon of water to a tablespoon, I think, of fertilizer or two tablespoons, however, and I think I'm going to fertilize my my area where I plant at least. And it says, of course, you know, they're adding, they're, the, it's the ad, but it says it does wonders for poor soil. So I'm going to try that if I can find the ad, but I need to get it ordered. Uh, Becky said, I have a recipe for harvest muffins. Ooh, that sounds good, Becky. They are so good because they're loaded with goodness. Carrots, zucchini, and raisins. Mmm. That does sound good. Well, let's move on. Uh, let's show you where I am on my slow stitch. I might work a little on the boho. Let me get the... Let me just bring the whole tray out here. This is what I keep in my lap when I'm out in the recliner slow stitching. And then I have my little tray of goodies here, my little scissors and needle book. And I use this crochet thread a lot. Now, let me tip my camera a little because you aren't seeing it all. How is that? Is that better? So, Here's where I am on the boho. Uh, I had put this on and I wasn't happy with how these fringes were hanging. So I took two of them, put them together. And then I stitched a piece of gold up here. This is the back of it. And of course, you're going to see my stitching on the back. And uh, so I need to work on that. This is the one I'm going to swap. And this is the one I'm going to put in my journal. It's a little bit more of a rectangular shape. So we might do a few pieces on that this morning. I've also done a couple of these. This is the one I'm working on now. And this one, I'm just keeping the running stitch. And I didn't bring it in here. But in our tatting class on Tuesday, we made these little butterflies. And I've been making little butterflies following the pattern that she used in class, which is pretty basic pattern. I could tap one up here, but I'm not going to. <laughs> and so I've just been doing, and this was a circle I had cut uh, out of a blue jean material, this blue. And so I just put it on there. And then I like to stitch circular. 
and then I'm going to put the butterfly in there and I'm just doing this when I did my other piece like this that I had two circles on and I cut the circles out I'll show them they're on my cover right now but uh, I had the negative space and I had a negative space here well I'm going to do another one of these and I'm using the the negative space around this circle and this is just scrap that I had left over. These are so fun to do because they go easy. You just take your scraps and you pin them in place. You decide where you want to put each little scrap. Maybe I'll do one this morning. Um, just pin them in place and maybe do the basting stitch around. You do a basting stitch around the edge first. And of course, these are all pinned on. And then you come in and do your basting stitch around the pieces. And then you can take your pins out when you're doing all this was already done but when i was doing all this stitching in here um and i'm still working see i i got my needle here and i like this needle because it holds the number 10 thread so so that's a piece in progress and here's a couple of circles that i have um, what I'm going to do, not with this one, but with the, I'll probably work on them. I don't know when to get outside this afternoon. Maybe I'll sit on the porch swing. What you can do on a piece like this, not on this piece, because I want to keep this, but um, you, after you get all your stitching done, however you want to do it, you can make buttons. You can make fabric buttons, and especially if it's nice and thick after you get your, let's say right in here would be a button. Well, I've got the bottom layer, which is just a piece of denim, that's the back of it. I've got the bottom layer, I've got the denim circle, and then I've got this little piece of cotton where I'm going to put my butterfly, and then I've got the stitching. So there's four layers, and that makes a nice thick piece. And you can make a little button, you can cut button shapes out of this. And I want buttons for the cover to put on because one of the Becky's prompts was buttons. So I've got Becky's prompts around here someplace. You guys don't want to see my cart over there. It's pack style. Bio high. Uh, here's that blue. We might do just pin some on and stitch a little. This is the journal where I am on the journal. Um, I, I've been wrapping it in a tablecloth wrap here and I've got a piece of blue thread here that needs to be saved I'm gonna put this pin over here for right now so and of course I open it up backwards and you have seen the first signature of this a lot of times but I'll do a flip here uh, can you guys see let me let my camera catch up with me I think you can see it so this is the first page. It was just a, a weave, woven fabric. And I got a, and I have found out, let me go back to this one, the center here. If I put my pins in, in a way where that point goes between fabric, it doesn't stick me as much. And so I've been going in and adjusting my needles so the points don't stick out over here. It's in between fabric. And this is just pinned in the middle of the signature. This was the balance, light and dark. These were the four different techniques, the sashiko and the another stitch. I forget what the others. One has little, is going crosswise over each other. And then this one's just up and down. This was the darning and that was the four patch quilting styles. And I forget what the prompt was here. I'm going to have to go look, but it's just diagonals. And I, because she put charms in hers, I put charms in mine, little brass charms on some of them. And this was just, I'm going to use this as a bookmark. This needs to be adjusted. This is the English paper PC. This is the tri Trixie fabric where um, I use terry cloth and a part of a lace curtain. I put a big button on it. This was a, a scarf. I can see. I don't know if you guys can. But in here. Well, I can pull this. This was a. This is kind of hard to stitch on. as part of a denim jacket. So I just cut the leaf out. 
but you can see it's transparent in there. And so I put my leaf in there and I can see a part of it. And then over here, I have that ribbon, the elephant ribbon that I can pull out. I'm not gonna pull it all the way out, but it kind of makes a tab too. And this was the heart and here's a button. This is what I'm talking about making buttons out of that, that piece that I was stitching on or not that piece, but a piece like it. And, and uh, so I think I'm gonna make a bunch of these buttons to put on my cover. And this was the heart and inside I'm, I'm gonna put a picture of my mother and her two sisters on here. And I'm thinking about doing a red running stitch around the border. It's, it's stitched on and this is has a, the hearts hanging on the button, but I pinned it down for now because it moves around a lot. This was the pojaki, pojaki, I can't pronounce it, where you fold the, the seams under. I really like that technique. And this is just a piece of paper with strips where I'm going to document. Now we're getting into the second signature. You've seen this one. This is the nine patch with this. This took me a long time to do all that seed stitching. And then I have these numbers one through nine. And I also have in my scribble journal out by my recliner, I pre always keep forgetting to put in here. There's a, they call them grid poems that read the same way. Ouch. Let's put that in between. The grid poems read the same way horizontally. And I mean, not the same way. They make sense. You can read the grid poem horizontally or vertically. So, and you make it up. And she made up one, but I, I tried to make my own. This was the feather. And I did French knots over here, but I haven't done them in here. And this is just pinned on too. Uh, I had that, the bright blue spooky things in there. I took them out, but here's the back of it. And I'm thinking about just leaving this rather than try to put French knots in there because I'm over that feather. This is the, um, oh, I forget what they call this. This is the technique where they have those little triangular things at the corners. I forget what that's called. And then this is the if you love it set it free and I made mine she did a book well my pages are bigger her her book is more of a square book well my book is more rectangular so I took a piece of this linen that I got from from um, Marty um, Marty I get Marty and Malia mixed up was it Malia I think it's Malia not Marty uh, I got this from Malia, the Chadwick Rose. She was selling linen packets, and I bought three, but boy, I could use three more. And so this was kind of a dresser scarf that has um, little pulled stitches in there. And this is my circle. If you love something, set it free. I don't know if you guys can read that. But this is the stitching of the walnut thread that I dyed. Uh, let's see, do I have it here? Here. I dyed this thread a couple weeks ago. And uh, this is more of a string. This comes off of that. It was here. This comes off of this. It's more of a heavier, like a size 8. I got it at eBay. So I have no idea. And then this is more of an embroidery thread. And that's what I stitched this on. So, and then I made mine into like a little page. Like this is the cover. And I did not stitch anything on the cover. And you open it up. And I'm just going to leave that because it's got all these pu pretty pulled stitches on there. And I like it just like that. And then here's my page. And I made a little gusset in here where I stitched my page. And here's the back of it. I don't know. If I'm pulled over enough. You guys can see the back. And I put one of those, these, uh, I've saved these. In, when I pulled those ties apart, I saved the inner facing. 
and I really like using that, especially on thin fabrics. It kind of gives it some thickness. And this will be stitched down. I, I don't have it. I just have it pinned in there right now. The back piece will be stitched down. And then I put a little pocket in here and put a piece of my tatting. Now, let's pull this up a little. You can't pull it up too much or I'll knock my... But I put a little tatting. I had a little practice piece of tatting. And I'm going to put something in there. I haven't decided. And then what you do on the other half of this, a dresser scar. And this was a little little piece in here that had the pulled stitches over here too well the other half of this and the other half of this I that's what I buried out in the yard underneath the tree underneath the red mulch and this is the most recent page over here the friendship star and let me tell you this was, I, I didn't know if I was going to get this done because this is a silk tie here and it was really wonky. And then this was a tablecloth. That's this blue tablecloth. And it was really wonky until I press, I did press it out. I pressed my seams with an iron and then I was able to work with it more and I did a running stitch around the edge. But you could see my stitching and you see this, this piece here does not come down to the point. It ends right up in there. So I kind of covered up a lot of my stitches that were showing because I stitched it with a light colored thread. That's all stitched down, so you won't be able to you won't be able to see it. You can see the back of it here. And there's where I stitched the word friendship. But this fabric down here is this fabric here. And look how it's frayed. It was a silk tie. And I like it down here, but boy, that was not an easy task. And somebody else had used a silk piece and was bemoaning that the next time they're going to use quilter's cotton. <laughs> so I'm at the, I'm ready for next week, so be week 14. And then these are just more signatures here. And I need to stitch some more fabric there. We're not going to do that today, though. So let me pull this out. I'll wrap this back up again, I mean. So I've been having a lot of fun with that. Uh, fi finished my friendship star mostly on the in the book. And then I've been stitching those. And I'll show you that next. Those circles. put that inside so that then I've been working on the cover and been making pretty good progress although it doesn't look like progress it is progress this is the test area here I call this my test area it's really more of a playground that you can see I stitched the just the blue running stitches on this denim and this is one of those pieces that I showed on my community tab I have two of the I've been making two uh, two of, um, you'll see this on the other side. This is going to have some, this is the balance one. I'm going to put some blue running stitches in there. But this piece is, I cut it out. And what you saw on the, this other piece that I'm working on, where did it go off to? Right here, this white stitch was around here. And when I cut out the circle, I saved this. And when you do those running stitches, if you come down and make those little bitty stitches across it, it holds all those in. So, and I left a little space. Let's put, oh, I can't because it's pinned down. I left, I left a little space in there. So when I cut, I could cut around in there. And then these were all stitched separately. I'm still stitching on this. I might work on that this afternoon. So this is my playground. I've been working in that area. Then on the other side, on the other side over here, and it doesn't look like much, but it actually is. This is my book cover area over here. 
and I'm not sure if I showed you the couching before where I couch this piece around here and it is right on the edge and I know Becky said do not get a lot of thickness around here well this will be the only one I wanted to see how it work and this is all seed stitch and that takes a long time for me to do and uh, I think what I'll do like this is the end of the book it goes this way the cut book cover now let me turn it the book cover goes like this and I think I'll just put some bias fabric bias and I might try to cut it myself you cut your bias on the diagonal I might get a piece of fabric and or even use a piece that I've salvaged and then this is just a running stitch and this is where I put one of those ties interfacing on the back and I'm going to leave this blank you'll be seeing where I leave several blank circles in here which will show the original fabric um then this is the balance circle here with this was actually a big polka dotted black and white fabric kind of a denim type thing I need to finish my blank stitch around the edge but this represents the dark and the light and of course the dark around in there and this needs to be stitched down this is that other piece of what I showed on my community tab and all these others are stitched down so my goal here is to when she does a technique if I can now it's going to be pretty hard for me to do the nine patch on here I might be able to do a, a little nine patch but boy I'm going to use cotton when I do because and then cut my circle to where I'll have the the heart square the center square and the cir circle and then just have the little edges going around that I'll need to make two of those and I'm kind of four, four patch would be pretty easy to do so every time she does a technique and I need to do the darning one I pretty much do the running stitches and I've done the seed stitch on here I need to do she has shown where she does the her her blanket stitch where she's done uh done it kind of in a web type form this is all blanket stitch of course hers is prettier than mine but I need to do that over here so I'm my goal and then I'm going to put those buttons on here those fabric buttons and I'm going to put Becky's flag on here so this is just this will be worked on throughout the entire year um as she teaches a technique I'm going to try to incorporate it on here and I want to do this entire piece of fabric so who knows what I'll have um I think some of this test area over here once I get it all stitched and everything will make a nice nice page um maybe I don't know I got some other ideas for it but I'm not ready to announce yet so we'll see what happens but it's quite a large piece of fabric it is I think it's I don't think I've cut off of this I think this is this is a yard wide and probably about 18 or 22 probably about 22 inches wide uh 22 inches long so it'll it'll take me all year to do this and probably then some but this is a this is my main art journal of 2024 I decided I was going to do slow stitching so when that's all I'm going to show you on the cover we're not going to work on it I just wanted to do a show and tell where's the other side of this and I like to fold it up so I can see my stitching Now, Becky was going to do a craft and chat, but she had posted that she couldn't get it set up to get multiple, what, eight or nine people in the room. So she canceled that. So if any of you were watching for that, you should have seen her message. 
it's been canceled. So I might go until about 9.45 today. We'll see, because I have a lot of things I want to do. All right, so we'll put that there. So what I was going to do was out of here, at least we can pin, because I've, I've been saving the pieces for another one of these pieces here. And I just work right on my tray, which gets a little... So this is my other piece that I'm going to do here. And it's it's got a seam here, but I think this was a pair of blue jeans. It's kind of a the stretchy denim. Of course, I've cut it, so it's it's going to be stretchy. But by the time you put all that those pieces on there, it won't stretch anymore. It will be. And I think I'm going to let this be the back side and this be the where I'm going to put pieces. And let's just start with the pins. Let me get some of this. I bought me a tape measure. <laughs> I needed a tape measure. Some pieces here out of my way. And this is the floss I pulled to stitch with. And I've been using this blue. Let me get it off of the... Out of my way! All right. I might need those scissors. Just kind of adjust things here. Here's that. <clears throat> I should get this off of the tray. This is that black polka dot. And since I didn't want to do a circle, I just used this as my circle. And and I did that on that my page in the journal, too. Let me get these off. That's some more denim. Denim leg here. We'll just set these aside, too. And when I was at Hobby Lobby, boy, I came home tired that day. I was exhausted, which I think I might be um, Sunday. Even though I'm not driving, I'm, I still come home tired. All right. Let me just kind of adjust things here so I have a, a working area or sort of a working area. Little, little pieces. I didn't bring my little round tin. It's full. I need to fill up my teddy bear again. All right. We're going to start on another one of these so I can show you. She shows you how to do it. This is Japanese Boro inspired. Look, I got a needle here. Penelope, she eats my needles, so I don't like. Let's put it in here. I don't like giving Penelope the needles because they don't have heads on them to to uh, catch them from going in her tummy. All right. All righty. So I'm going to work on this area. And I'm just going to pull some pieces off of here. Let's get some pins out here so that I can pin. All right. Can you guys see? Uh, I can't adjust my camera anymore that way because of my setup. But let's just start. And some of these pieces are too big. And this happens to be a hem. But I think I'll just cut it across the hem here. So I can't tear that. She likes to tear, but I can't tear a hemline. So we're just going to put it on there. And I usually rearrange as I'm going. Here's some, some scrap of the tape measure fabric. And I could tear that maybe. No, it didn't cut it enough. What I should do is take all of this mess that I have here. Hold on. Mary's changing sides here. I bought me a, also another pair of... I'm going to mark these and only use them for fabric. These I've been using for multimedia. Let me put my... Let me work on this side. I think you'll see it better. There. And what's this? Those are, oh, these are floss. 
These are bead threaders. I like to use them with my tatting to, or thread my needle. All right, I was working on that piece and I covered it up. So here it is. I'm just gonna snip this a little bit more. It's harder to tear these smaller pieces. Uh, let's let's me refresh my chat and see what you guys are talking about. Welcome in. Thank you for joining me on a on a Friday morning. I haven't been I haven't been streaming much. Uh, I've been stitching. I just want to stitch. Let's see. Hi, Brenda. Being in person with people alone exhausts me. I feel everyone's energy and go hyper vigilant, which makes me physically and emotionally exhausted, trying to find ways to cope with that. Are you talking about uh, the chat streams? Being in person with people alone exhausts me. Well, you know, Becky, I think that's probably a part of your personality. Um, there are some people that, you know, if you, and you probably have studied personality traits. There are some people that get really energized just being around people. And I'm not one of those people either. Although uh, I don't do too bad uh, in the chat streams. What, what happens to me in the chat streams is that I want to say something and I'm just sitting there waiting for the other person to quit. <laughs> and sometimes I I start chatting and I don't realize somebody else is already talking. So uh, I kind of have to watch my P's and Q's there. But, uh, and, you know, it it's, I, I get what you mean. Let's put it that way. Let's see. I want to get a little of this pattern in here. Let's just cut it. And tear it. Well, that's a whole lot. But sometimes if you just sit quietly and listen to everybody else. Now, I was thinking you you decided you weren't going to stream this or have the craft and chat but i was thinking um for at least an hour i would have to go on mute because my brother turns the tv on at 10 o'clock our time and i you know i don't like to rob his tv time from him he doesn't he he doesn't uh take part in all that stuff anyway and it's his enjoyment and so I like to have him enjoy it and I'm kind of worried about next year they're moving the wrestling to Netflix now I have Netflix and so I'm thinking about getting a TV monitor I've got a little one over here and uh um, casting it from my phone, I'd have to set it up every time that he wanted to watch wrestling, but he's going to miss that. He's going to miss the wrestling. That's, he enjoys that wrestling. Let's get a piece of this. This is from Tanya McIntyre's ugly fabric. She said I could keep it. I am going to stitch a piece and send it to her, though. A slow stitch on it and send it to her. And let's see. This is a piece of that blue. Let's see. Where is the bigger blue? Where is that? Let's get a piece of this pretty blue. I think I'm going to cut a circle out of this, though. It's kind of dark. Maybe I'll cut a circle out of this, even though it's not blue. Let's tear. Let's put a piece of this on. Let's. 
I got this at the thrift store, and Becky said they, they were quilting here. That's what all this cotton is. And I had a lot of it. I didn't know what I was ever going to use it for, but here it is. Here it is. And I've been enjoying this pretty blue. Let's put tuck it under that one. And I saw this little piece was a little corner. Can I put that right there? That could be the edge of a circle because it curves. And where's that other piece that I had? Well, I'll find it when I find it. Let's put this one up. I like to put these where they're really, you can see them. Maybe down here. The numbers, the little tape measure stuff. Put that one there. And what else I have? I have a piece up here. Uh, these little pieces. Here's another circle. Uh, don't think so. Maybe a piece like this up here. Only cut it off of this. And these are all going my little scrap bin. These have been nice to stitch down and make buttons with. Um, you know, just even sew them on the machine. But you could, you know, like she did that Valentine. And then just make a button out of all this little scrap. Don't throw it away. Let's get a piece of this for the top there. And I like that it's going at a diagonal. Let's let's cut it here. I dropped it. Oh, and it's gonna, I'm gonna have to cut it because it's not gonna tear on the the way I want it to tear. And I can actually put it both directions, but I'm gonna tuck it under these pieces which I promptly messed up here. And you need to be sure you leave overlapping enough when you're stitching that you stitch these pieces with an overlap. And I learned that I don't like the points. Now, the only thing I want to do here is the circle. And you know what? I'll cover that up if I put circle. So let's move this piece. course they cling on to each other so you kind of addition them how you like them so let's cut a couple circles and I'm thinking that I'll cut the circles out of um, uh, we'll save those off no, save this piece off I'm thinking I'll cut my circles out of this. And these are just threads and whatnot. Thread goes over here. Kind of sorting out right now. And what I like to do is take a big piece like this and the pieces that I'm saving off for another one I just put in here. And then I'll fold it up. Like so. And I'm going to put that back in my bag. So... I don't, I'm not going to make this circle out of this. This, I think, is Tim Holtz fabric, text fabric. or It was printed several years ago. I don't know if it was Tim Holtz or somebody else who did that original. This is the original text stuff. I think this is Tim Holtz. But then I, I got... What did I do with my pens? I don't want to lose those. 
that over there. This will all go in my little round tin. I'll put this scissors off the tray. This is thread and tape measure. I think I'm going to do the circles out of this. This I got from Pearl. And she just sold a, a piece of it. But I think I got this from Pearl. I sure have been enjoying this. And I think I'll cut my circles out of this area here. And I have a pattern here. Right here. I made, see, I save all my extra threads and make these little nice little tassel. I thought that I'd put that in my stitch book, but... You know, your threads that are about six inches long or so, just fold them together, put them together, and then fold them in half and make some nice little tassels there. I'm going to pull this off. Put this on separate. All righty. So I'm going to use a pen to do this, but the 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 fabric itself will will I mean the stitching will cover up my marks. And as I was sorting through stuff, I found a whole box of fine point charpies. Fine point charpies. And I'm going to put this with my stitching stuff after I'm done. Uh, this could go on the boho. And so can my butterfly. And that's another little square. There's a little square that can, well, that can go in the, and that goes with, I have the pocket to that someplace. Uh, I'm looking for, let's use this pen here. It's a Stabilo pencil. And the only reason I'm doing it on the front is I can kind of see that I'm getting text. This, this part I'll use for something else. And I'm just going to kind of mark around the circle here. We're going to cut out a circle. And I think I only put one circle on the one that I'm working on. So I might just do one circle. Because <laughs> you want to leave enough other stuff for people to enjoy but i might also put the little square inside of the circle and put another little butterfly i'm tatting those little butterflies from i didn't bring them in here but last tuesday we had our first part one of our beginning needle tatting and we made a butterfly and i've been practicing i want to do She's got several things she's going to teach us, and I'm going to do put them in a little tatting journal separate from my other tatting journals. I'm just going to tear. I want to do some other things this morning, other than this, but. So I'll, I'll probably just pin this and maybe do the edge. And I didn't tear it down far enough. Hold on. It'll tear this way too. A little piece of paper. There we go. And then I'll save this. It's a nice big piece that I, I like the text print on it. All right. So we're just going to cut. And it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. And it's just so it's circular-ish. Circular-ish. Let's see. Did Joyce come in? Did Pearl come in? Dee Dee's here. 
Oh, let me go. Let me refresh my chat. I'm missing you guys. I'm missing you guys. Good morning to everybody who's coming in and I've missed you. Let me go to the chat filter all messages. I'm going to start down at the bottom. Hi, Dar. Thank you, Becky, for saying hi to Dar. Hi, Brenda. Brenda says, Sarah worked at our local hospital after getting her LPN and started a month before COVID came on the scene. She was working in in college to get her aunt in. Her patients, people she knew. Aww. Hi, Stitch It Pam. Good morning. Mina. Hi, Mina. Good morning, Mina. Hi, Pearl. It's good to see you. And I thought I saw Didi up there. Let me go up. Dar is here. Pearl. Pearl, are you having a sale? Uh oh, there's Roy. Hi, Mr. Roy. Joyce is here. There's Didi. Whoops, I almost put Didi in timeout. <gasps> no, don't do that, Mary. <laughs> Uh, see, Dee Dee says, Mary will never use all of her full threads, let alone the saved ones. <laughs> That's true, Dee Dee. Uh, and I've been thinking a lot lately of what will happen to my stuff after I'm gone. You know, everybody moves on in life or after life. And I, maybe because of this is Easter, I've been thinking of it a little bit more. And, you know, I've come to the conclusion that even if it doesn't survive, it'd be nice if it would survive. Um, I would like to see it go to somebody in our art community who would distribute it to people who really wanted it, like extra stuff, like Dee Dee said, Mary will never use all that. Well, I won't. But if that's not possible, you know, I, I would kind of have to rely on somebody to and I think we were talking about that in Becky's stream too you know Becky said it's just stuff Becky was saying make a will but remember it's just stuff but my art journals and stuff even if even if it goes to goodwill you know I go to goodwill and of course goodwill is getting kind of poopy about putting cool stuff out they put all their clothes I think that some of those stores don't like that the resellers come in and get stuff and i think it's kind of a i don't know that for sure and it's also the economy it's also the economy but uh we're finding a lot of that i don't think i allowed for all this I'm going to have to start pinning down. I didn't. Let's get that num. What did I do with them? What did I do with my. The pieces I was saving. I'm going to put this back in my. But even if it goes to. Let's just say not goodwill to a thrift store someplace and somebody finds it. And. It'd be nice if it were my art and they found it. But even if it's just stash, they say, oh, look, I found these super tips. And there's a unique color of every one. <laughs> Becky says, Mary, you're going to use those before you die. Becky sent me a set of super tips that it has every, there's 80 of them. And every color's unique. And I've been trying to use them on the Sunday nights. Well, I was looking for the number fabric. I saved it out. And then I promptly lost it. Did I throw that back in? No, here. Is this it? Here's a... thought I saw it in here. Huh. I'm always losing stuff. How can I lose stuff in two square feet of space? Did I put it back in the bag? Let me check. <clears throat> did I wrap it up in here? I didn't think I did. Huh. 
Oh, here's a piece. We'll use that. This will be saved for maybe another one as I get working here. I like to sit in there in the recliner and work on this stuff. So this is not covered. Let's, let's put this piece down here. Oh, look, and it just fits. And this, I'm going to pull up. And let's put a... Let's <laughs> These threads will catch on to each other and pull... So once I get it placed, I don't know if I like that there. It's a little thick. I might put another piece in there. Let's move this one over here. I'm just about ready to start. Can I move that down a little there? And um, I want to put a piece in here. This would be cool down here. Hmm, I might change my ways. I don't want to, you don't want to build up too much of a thickness here. Cotton's okay, but denim, it's kind of hard to stitch through. And I'm going to cut it here because I don't like the little pointy points. They're hard to, those, you got to get your thread right down in there. Or it'll, now let's make a smaller square here. Um, kind of cut it uh, here if I can. It doesn't have to be a square. It can be a rectangle. Um, I'm going to put that in the center. Now I think I'm ready to pin. No, oh, I've got one little corner up there. I do like this piece kind of mirroring that. I don't have that on the other, but you know, as you work, as you work on this stuff, go, oh, that's cool. Let's use that. Let's put a piece of this. And it's got the cotton on it. I'm going to go up here in the corner. Good morning, Dee Dee. I left off with Dee Dee. Dee Dee says, Brenda, not one of my children is an RN used to work in the LA California jail oh nod I'm not sure what she's saying there used to work in the LA jail had to have police escort everywhere oh one of your daughters oh she's nodding n-o-d she's nodding she's shaking her head yes to Brenda she said one of her daughters is an RN used to work in the LA California jail and she had to have a police escort everywhere. <laughs> yep. And I just want that kind of right up in here. I want that little dot to show. So now I'm ready to pin it. I'm going to dump some out here. It's easier to grab a hold of them. I don't want them all. I'm going to start with that. I have to tell you, my recliner has a couple of these little pins. I think they fall down the in between, though. I haven't sat on one yet. I'll let you know when I sit on a pin. You'll probably hear me. All right. Let's see. Brenda says... One watches movies alone and sleeps. The other one plays music and crochets. Brenda says, Dee Dee, my daughters are post-op RN and a teacher. Both need to de people. <clears throat> my teacher has pre-K this year after having middle schoolers. They wear her out. Oh, pre-K. I could see how pre-K could wear her out. My nurse child gets emotionally worn out. Yeah, there's a, some personalities just need extra time. I'm going to pin it this way. Oh, yeah. Extra time to themselves. And the other personalities thrive. I'm going to leave that seam. There's a blue jean seam there on the backing piece that 
this pin is having trouble going through. Yeah. And let's pin this down before I lose those. And like I said, if you pin this in such a way, let's move this over a little. If you pin it in such a way that you pin that point in between the fabrics, it kind of cushions it so you don't prick yourself. Now you can, this one's kind of pointing out here. You just kind of pin it inside and <clears throat> you don't prick yourself. My, let me roll my sleeves up. They're catching on to things. <laughs> Becky says, I love the saying, introverts unite in small single units. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you really get a sense if you work in an office setting. Like when I first started programming, <clears throat> I worked for a credit card company. And you get two of those very extroverted people in the same general area. And I lost this piece. You get two of them together. And boy, I'll tell you the mornings. Uh, the first couple hours in the morning was nothing but, and they'd laugh and they'd, I don't mind them laughing, but it was loud and you could hear them all over the, it was a big open area and you could hear them all over the room and there was no escaping it because it was an open cubicle area and you couldn't concentrate on your own work because of all their laughing. <laughs> I love them laughing, but however, and except it got a little annoying at times and you can't say anything because you know that's their personality they don't they don't see it as being annoying and you can't if you'd say anything you'd get in trouble like can you just hold it down a little and let my head think now this I pulled the piece out from here, but it is the blue denim under. No, I got a piece of blue denim under there. So I guess I'm good with that. I pulled it off of here. This is going to be thick right in there, though. Let's. Can I move that up a little? No. Let's take this one. I could take that off and get rid of a little of that thickness. I think I will. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can see how easy this is. You just take scraps. And when you're, especially those of you that sew a lot, like Becky. And I haven't seen Kathy Cowell along, around for, I'm thinking about her the other day. I haven't seen Kathy Cowell she used to have us Friday sews, and I see Made by Pam and Stitch It Pam, but I haven't seen Made by Pam. I, I think what happens is <clears throat> I, I uh, on my YouTube, I haven't been watching as much recently. I just haven't been there, <clears throat> not because of anything other than, uh, you know, I guess I just need that time to myself. And uh, I'm going to put that underneath. I think YouTube thinks you don't want to watch these people anymore. So they don't, sometimes they don't unsubscribe you, but they don't, they don't show the feed, the lives. And I haven't seen Made by Pam stream in quite a bit. And I did peek in on Dee Dee the other day, but I just peeked in enough to say hello because... And the TV was going on, and I don't like to watch videos while the TV is blaring because that's too much noise in my head. <laughs> Talking about depeopling. So I'm just kind of pinning this together. And like I said, I'm tucking the points of those needles between the fabrics. And that kind of <coughs> keeps them from pricking at me. 
Let's see. I like to pin it the opposite way I'm stitching so that I don't stitch over, have to stitch over a head. So I'll be stitching down this way first. And I'm going to change this a little. And let's pin this piece down. I think I got enough in here to hold it. Because I'm just going to... Whoops, I need to put something in there. Or do I? Yeah, I do. Uh, just a little piece. A dark piece. Let's put that in there and I'll cut it. I'll cut it <clears throat> after I... And these over here will all go in my little round tin that ends up in the teddy bear. But these will make good buttons. Maybe I'll sit and make some buttons today. I want to work on my... I also want to... Whoops. I want to work on my boho fabric squares <clears throat> this weekend for sure. All right, so let's dump the remaining pins back in the case. All right, let me go down. I I probably missed some stuff. This is where Dee Dee came in. Uh, Becky said, I'm conditioned from childhood. The only person that enjoyed me was my grandmother. Aw. The rest wanted me to maybe to be seen, but definitely not heard. Aw. We hear you, Becky. Those are the times you kind of have to forget. <clears throat> I um, I think I was heard when I was a child, but I was also unmercifully teased when I was younger. And I'm not even going to tell you what they called me because you guys will start calling me that. And it was not a very complimentary Let's see, I think I'll stitch it before I cut it. No, because I lose my edge. Let's cut it now. And since this piece will probably be, I don't know what will happen to it. Uh, I'm not going to worry about the ends here. They'll just be however they are. Kind of cutting in the air. I call this, see now I have a pen going across there. And I don't like that. Let's move it. That was the last one I put in. It's hard to stitch. You don't want to put them in places where it's going to interfere with your stitching. Or your cutting. And of course, I got this all from K3N Cloth Tales. This is Japanese Boro inspired. And she really talks about saying the inspired because it's not authentic Japanese Boro. We kind of look at it and say, oh, that inspires me. Let's cut the trim this down a little too. I'm almost done here. And I'm just kind of trimming off the ends. 
and I'll save all these little pieces and this will become like those hearts that we did. Okay, see? See what we ended up from, from that scrap? From all those scraps? What we ended up with? Whoops, that's going on my... So now, what you do, I'm going to take a... <clears throat> I'm not going to use this one. I could, but it's kind of thick. This is a number 10 crochet thread. Let's put it over here. Right in my way. I, I kind of choose what color. I, I kind of picked out all the blues from my floss. I think this color will blend in nice. This one's a little darker. Let's use this. Which I think I already have a piece pulled from it. <clears throat> K3N likes to use a lot of neutrals in her stitching. And she'll tea dye. I bought some tea at the grocery store. That You know, cheap tea. In the big box, the store brand tea. I'm going to tea dye some fabrics. Just because she did. I think I'm going to use this. It looks like I've already cut it. And I do. And I will put that in here. Just because it didn't get put in the box. We'll put it in here. An extra pin. And let's get a needle. Um, I think I'm going to use this needle that I've been using because it, it's easy to thread. And I'll finish this one this afternoon. I'm going to put a little tatted butterfly in there. Now I lost my thread. <laughs> Got hooked on to it, the other one. All right, let me come out and look at chat again. Let me refresh and go down to the bottom. I wish you all a good Friday. Today is Good Friday. It's the day that they hung Jesus on the cross. And celebrate in the Christian tradition, the Good Friday services. Is this piece for her journal or for her boho project? Um, I'm just kind of doing these. Um, I think these pieces, not these that I'm doing, but similar ones. I'm going to make fabric buttons, Mina, and I'm going to cut them after I stitch them. Not these particular pieces. These I have a secret meaning for. But uh, um, like this would make a pretty button right there. This would make a nice button. And I, I, I might do something in colors, different colors for my cover of my stitch journal. Like there's a lot of golds and browns on that cover. Maybe even blacks, reds. Um, a lot of browns and golds. I'm going to do similar pieces. I'm just playing with this because I need to use up the fabric. But I'm thinking fabric buttons eventually. But these I just started doing because they're fast and they're relatively easy to do. Uh, like I'm doing this one here in front of you guys. I'm just going to stitch the border and I'll do all the other stitching uh, offline. But I think that there's four threads here. Let's see if I can get it unthreaded. One and two. Whoops, I don't want to lose that other one. And then this piece, I'm going to wrap around. Let's wrap it around these needles. So I don't lose it. Take my needles and put them in the carton over there. Now I should have two pieces here, and I do. And gotta find the 
ends. Put your ends together as close as you can together. And I like a fairly long piece. And let me show you what I've, especially when I'm stitching with this crochet thread, when I do my running stitches with this number 10 thread, it likes to tangle. And <clears throat> I figured out a way or just ran across the way while I was stitching with a long thread to prevent it from tangling as bad. It still tangles, but it's a little bit easier to control. And thread my needle here. You know it's threaded when it hangs. Yeah, I'm going to knock something off over here. Pins. <clears throat> All right. So I'm just going to stitch, stitch the edge with the running stitch. It'll go pretty fast. And I've got the hem of it over here. So I can pretty much hide my needle this is kind of it's not a sharp sharp point it's kind of a medium sharp point it's not blunt but going through the denim now i'm going to come up through there and i kind of got a little denim piece showing here but i don't mind that up at the corner and then you can't see it but i leave a tail here pull it through until i get to a good tail I leave maybe a couple inches with a longer thread you can do that and then I go back in and you could knot it I don't knot it ahead of time and pull that through and then to make my knot I hold on to this tail and I do a loop and I think I kind of got doing this when I made those tassels here's my thread that I'm holding on to here my tail and then I take my needle thread and loop it around and I come under that tail and through this loop and just make my little knot that way. And of course, you know, little things get in the way. And I'll do that a couple times. And it makes a clean little knot. I do that quite a bit. I, I will also, I'm getting that extra white thread piece here. I will also pull my thread between the fabric and up that way and hide this tail. I didn't do that here. I, when I have a, a tail hanging like this after I've knotted it, let me find it here. Where'd he go off to? Right here. I've tied that double knot. I will take my scissors because this tail, just like when you're crocheting or tatting, it can get in your way. And I just kind of snip it off. Sometimes I snip everything and have to redo it. But And thread likes to catch on to stuff. So kind of keep your area as clean as you can. <laughs> Mary, listen to your own advice. So... When you're stitching the base, we call this the base stitch, K3N, I learned the hidden base stitch. You take a long stitch on the back and a little tiny stitch on the front. And I'm going through the, I'm still going through that seam there. See, look, that thread wanted to catch on to my pencil. And I, even when I, buying journals i find that i have to keep my work area pretty pretty clear when i'm doing stuff with long threads because they like to they like to catch on to things and they get in there what's that another little that's off of that silk piece so you take a long stitch on the back and a a little stitch on the front and you guys aren't going to see it too well here because I'm in the dark area and I'm using a dark thread or a medium thread. But now this is floating around. Let's put that back over here like I wanted it. And 
kind of have to keep track if you're on the front or the back. I think I'm on the back here. No, I'm on the front. No, I'm on the back. I'm in the seam. Let's get, we'll just come from the back. Hopefully that's right. I get all these threads hanging and I don't know which thread is what. I'm kind of in the seam there. Try to stay out of the seam. But for this piece, it doesn't matter too much. And I'm taking tiny stitches on the front. Now I want to get this piece. I didn't pin this blue one down very good. Try to hold it with my fingers because I'm ready to stitch it down. And you go through all these layers. And I could have a sharper needle, but I like this needle because I like the eye. I can thread it with out a needle threader. <laughs> All right, so that kind of held that piece in place. And you can load your needle up here, take a long stitch on the back. And I'm I'm going through several layers here, and the bottom layer is denim, so it's a little. But I'm loading up my needle here with several. It's a little bit harder to do the smaller stitches. When you do this, you really need a longer needle. Am I going right? I think I am. Let's come out one more time here. One more time. Come on. Come on, come on. There you go. And so I've loaded up three stitches there. And... Kind of pull your needle through. It's a little bit harder when you've got a heavier fabric. And I've layered these. So I generally just do one or two stitches at the most. But see, it, it wants to catch on to stuff. Maybe I'll just do a side. I'm getting tired of doing this. <laughs> and I'll tuck this under. Tuck it under my circle. I need better lighting. I need to get better lighting. I have better lighting. I just don't have it up. All right. And I'm on the back. I thought it was on the front. I'm on the front. But I, gen I generally just do at the most one when I'm doing these layered pieces because... My needle is, like I said, it's not a sharp, it's it's not completely blunt. It's not a darning, I mean, it's not a yarn needle. But it's, it's not a sharp, sharp needle either. And you do a long stitch on the back and a little stitch on the front. Now, I don't mind if my stitches, my little stitches are small and not tiny. <laughs> It doesn't bother me if you can kind of see stitches in there, but it, they all kind of blend in anyway. Yeah. But once you get all these little pieces basted down, then the fun begins. So see this pointy stuff? I don't like the pointy, especially when I'm coming from the back. It's hard to, it's not hard, the neat, the fabric is not hard to go through. I'm going to take another stitch here, this way. I'm going to back stitch it. It's just that that little point is hard to get down to where it doesn't want to wobble all around and once you get this all stitched I, I'm only going to stitch down to here online because I'm ready to move on but once you, you stitch all around the, the perimeter here then you go in and you stitch each one of these little edges down and that holds your fabric together 
it holds it all together like this. See, this is all stitched down here. And then you can go in and do your, this is all running stitch here. It's all just running stitch. There's no fancy dancy stitches on here. Well, a little fancy where I crossed my running stitches there, but, and really, uh, and like these go running stitches go in a circle. And then I don't know if you can see there's blue that kind of come in a, in a circular motion this way and you get movement like these are moving this way and those are moving this way and this is comes that way you get all this movement on here and i like the idea of the movement because i'm going to put a butterfly there i'm going to put a butterfly right in that little blue square so this is going to be similar to this I'm almost tempted to find a circle, circular piece and put it right in here, or cut me a circular piece like I have this. Maybe right in there, leave this star. Because see, look, there, it would fit right in there. And I can still have my star and my paisley. Got a little white, this is part of the, the bandana, little white dot off of the bandana. But these are fun to do, and the back is even fun to look at. And if you like to sit and, and uh, stitch, what did I do with my needle? Is it in here? Where did it go off to? Over here. And sometimes when your needle, when you're doing this stitching, if you hold your fabric, I'm holding it way up, uh, up above my camera maybe, and you just let it, it's not twisted too much, but let it hang. Let it hang and it will untwist. That's a... That's a needlework technique because <laughs> as you're going in and out and in and out, you're twisting your threads. That's something I learned years ago when I was doing a lot of cross stitch. I don't like the term cross stitch. It sounds so crafty. I like the term. Now, I'm going to pull this needle out because it's in my way. I like the term um, um, needlework just sounds more like it's an art and it is an art and I've been trying to convince my St. Louis friends that they are fabric artists and they go oh no not you know they don't see themselves as fabric artists but they are because they do beautiful beautiful work beautiful work and they have such patience I I uh, I don't have patience for those big pieces, even when if they're in, in like one color. Uh, I don't have the patience anymore to do that. Big pieces. I think the biggest piece I ever finished was like a sampler. And then it wasn't anything to brag about. Let's see if I can't get this needle. It doesn't want to go through. There we go. I'm just going to stitch to the bottom of this piece here. This piece kind of moved on me, but it's okay. Because it's just pinned down. But this is fun to do. So if you have scrap fabric, and if you don't have scrap fabric, maybe you have, I finished tearing up all those clothes. That I think I got 12 items at the Goodwill bins. And I was so fickle that day. When I went to the bins, was that last Tuesday? I can't remember. It was either last Tuesday or the Tuesday before. I went to the Goodwill bins, and as I was driving up, I'm saying, to myself, I'm not going to buy a lot of, of items. I'm just going to buy clothing. That's what I was saying to myself all the way up there. And I got up there and uh, I go, where are all the people? You know, usually there are people standing at the door waiting because I got there right at 10. I'm going, where are all the people? And uh, well, there were people there, but there weren't a big crowd. And as I got to looking, I'm down to the bottom here. I'm going to quit. And I'll just take my needle and put it right in here so that 
I know where it's at. Right on the white part. And I'll finish I'll finish stitching this. I don't know if I'll get to it this afternoon. Because I've got other things I want to do. I kind of wanted to get outside today. Uh, is that a fallen needle? Where'd he go? No, I guess that was just a thread. So I'm working on this. And I'm working on this. I'm going to put those, put my scissors up there, my pencils and needle threader and extra thread. I'll put these over there. These will go back in my sack here where I'm keeping pieces. I'll probably do a couple more of these. Use up all those scraps. These scraps over here will go in my circular bin. I'm not going to. And these pieces... These pieces could be put with my fabric, but I want to put them in a... I got some boxes at Hobby Lobby to put these things in, some of those circular hat boxes. Because I want to be able to get to these things pretty easy, and that's just paper. Uh, this is the cover of the journal. See, if I cut buttons, something like that, I showed you a button in my book, and then this is my book. Um, I wanted to work a little on my boho pieces. Let's pick out some bow. At least I can pin them. Let's save my pins out. Where'd my pins go? Let's save my pins out here. We might place some pieces on my boho. This fabric is so soft. This was a table napkin on top. And it's already hemmed along the edges here, which I really liked. And then this was kind of like a scarf um, that you would throw across your chair or something. It wasn't a head scarf. It was like a fabric scarf for <clears throat> to throw across your recliner, but it's really thin. And this fabric is so soft. So this is the piece that I'm going to swap. This is the start of it. And this piece I'm going to put in my book. And I'm going to let the fringe hang down the bottom of my book. So let's keep these out. Um, let's see. I think I'll probably... I had some blue thread here someplace. Uh, let's take this white fabric and put it with this. And put my... Crochet thread. <clears throat> I'm going to, well, let's put the tray down behind me. Let's put this on here. And then I'll put my crochet thread on the tray, but it'll fall if I don't try to do it now. Let's move this off my desk. And put it there. Now we want to do some boho. But let me come out and chat. We'll put the pieces down here. At least I can pin it. I may not get to stitching it here. I really liked how I did this because I wasn't liking it until I stitched the little couching stitches on there. Now I like it. It's supposed to go like that. Let me get this crochet thread off my desk. And this is the thread that I dyed. Of course, it's holding on. I dyed that with walnut dye. Let me get these off my, out of my hand here. I have to jump over all this stuff when I, after I'm done. You should see me try to get out of this room. <laughs> it's a trip, but I make it. Wind that thread up there. All right, we're going to do some boho. So I've been saving, I want to keep this out. I've been saving pieces here. I've got several bags. I'm not going to use it all, but boho, a lot of boho stuff that I can choose from. And let me tell you, I really have it. Becky inspired me. I keep dropping stuff here. 
There's some red lace. I don't know if I'll use that. I think I was thinking I'd make this as a base fabric, but we're going to finish the two squares that I have. Look at this. Isn't that cool? And there's that. And I got more. I'm just going to choose out some pieces and maybe pin them. Uh, that's more broken jewelry, I think, than boho. Although, we might keep it out and pick. Uh, I'm not done. I got some ties that I thought might be fun for boho. And I've got this big sack of trims of applique. <laughs> A key applique. I can't say it like the British do. So how am I going to get all of this on those two squares? I don't know. But we got it out. We're going to pick and choose. Becky said, I'm back from filling the bird feeders. What did Dee Dee say? Anyone I missed? I'm off to Lowe's for garden plants. Oh, Dee Dee's going to go get... Dee Dee always has such a beautiful garden. She has a beautiful, beautiful garden. She says, have a blessed good Friday, Dee Dee does. Did Raul come in? Hi, Raul. Mr. Raul and Mr. Roy, I think Roy is here. Bye, Dee Dee. Becky says, bye, Dee Dee. Where did Roy come in? Roy says, hi, Joyce, I hope you like it i did 91 prompts of the 100. oh joyce are you going to do the 100 day project i was thinking about doing that but i've got so many projects going i need to finish now my stitching like what i was doing earlier is really a year-long project rollo says hi mary and fibs happy easter also finish my scavenger hunt sketchbook see I was doing good in that scavenger hunt book until I got sick. Then I got sick. So I'm just going to kind of pile these bags up over here. Maybe down below too. So I have, we're going to keep the applique stuff out. Let's put this stuff down below. It's going to fall off my desk if I don't. And do I want anything out of here? I think I want some of this. Isn't this cool? Isn't this cool? I'll keep that out. And I'm kind of liking... I got more of this. I'm kind of liking... Maybe we'll just pull a piece off of it. Because it opens up. Now, I don't know. It might be fun to do it on the back. Or maybe on another boho. I like how this spreads out like a fishnet. But I can't see it going on that yellow and green. So I'm going to kind of hold back on that for now. And I've got ties over here. So these are going to go back in the bag and off my desk. And I also have Joyce. Bless her heart, sent some happy mail. Was it around Christmas that you did that, Joyce? Look at this. Look at this. Look at that. So we might put, I don't know where. <laughs> I don't know where. Um, I'll never get all of that on one. I could use it there, but it almost takes up the whole entire... Now, I'm losing my needles here. Losing my needles. Mary's losing her needles. So we're going to go through and pick out, like, floral. Isn't this pretty? I could see this going on here. Maybe even that. And I got my little butterfly over here. Uh, I think that's the back of him. Where's your other antenna? It's here. He has more than one. Where did he, it's here. I'm going to put this on somehow. And Becky did stitching. I might do a little stitching in here. She did like running stitches and fly stitches. I don't know if I'll get all of that on there because I have so much that I want to put on. 
Now she mounted hers, I think, on a canvas or a burlap backing. I'm not going to do that because I like this backing. I like that backing. I don't want to cover that up. I think I'm going to put this big flower on here and this one down in here. Um, and we'll leave that one alone. And it needs to be pinned because it keeps... Where are my pins? Oh, my brother's up gagging. He gets that gunk in his throat. I do too. There's my other piece I wanted to put on. I might save that out. Maybe I'll put that at the bottom. Uh, save that out. You're pretty, but you're prettier this way. I'm going to pin this here. Like that. So these boho, when you have a lot of different things you can put on it, it goes together pretty fast. Because you're not, you're just using, boho is kind of like 1960s. Um, I think they got started in the 60s with all the hippie and <laughs> the 70s culture where I don't know if I want that on there or not. He's not a he's not one of my more pristine ones. I might make another one or maybe use a smaller one that I'm tatting for this year. So I might hold back on him. Maybe I'll put him on my cover. Let's put this one. Can't decide if I want it on top or behind. I think I like it better behind. We'll put it that way for now. And let's see what else I got in these bags. This is the bag of applique. But I might have to trim some pieces off because I'll never get all these big pieces on there. Look at that red rose. Ooh, isn't this beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? See, that even that's pretty. I guess I could tuck it under. But maybe, maybe just, I hate, but it is stitched here. Here's a smaller piece. This trim. Ooh, this is pretty. And we don't need a lot of it. Just maybe, maybe just like that. Underneath of the flower. Come on, get your little petal up. It kind of goes with the maroon of the Of the fringe. I don't know if I like it way up there. I think I'll curve it around. Maybe make it circular. I like that. And I'll have to cut it off there. But I think I can do that. Or I can pull it under more maybe. Let's pin this one down. We'll just addition this and see. I'm not going to worry about it too much. This will be, it looks like it's hard to stitch through, that that's really soft. It's kind of a velvety, velvety. I think if I can kind of make a circle out of this or a semi-circle. I like that. I think I like it better on top, though. We'll let that little flower go underneath of it, things. Well, let's pin this one on. It's 
See, and I could do some stitching in here. So let's see what else I have. I got these little pieces. I think I'll save these out for maybe mine. Because I'm going to need little pieces. I These bigger pieces are pretty, but they're almost too big. This is this might go on mine. Where's mine? I'll save it out. These are almost too big. You'd have to cut them up, and I'm not ready to go cutting. This is pretty. We'll save that out. This is beautiful. This is a peacock. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? Wow. This would go on a nice piece if you had a larger fabric journal. And then here's another beautiful piece. I love the blacks and golds. Just beautiful piece. I think I got these one of Johnny's sales. Was it Sophia? One of the, I don't know which Sophia it was. Now this could be cut smaller pieces off of, but I think I got enough. Here's a pretty paisley piece. That's beautiful. I think I'll put all these back. So even though I get all these out, you know, you got to pick and choose. You've got to pick and choose. I want to use some of that. This is just gorgeous. Just gorgeous bird. Let's put them back in the sack. I'm pretty sure I got these from Johnny, Junk Journal Shop, one of her sales she was selling for Sophia. And this I got from Joyce. It doesn't quite go with these colors. I might make another one. It doesn't quite go, although the black goes. The black I think I got at Hobby Lobby. But I'm not sure where I'll put that now. I could layer... Just layer a piece in there in between. I'll have to think about it. But the blue, I might have to do another piece because I don't think the blue goes with all the coloring on this. And it's awfully big. Goes the other way. It's very pretty. It'd go nice on Becky's piece. I think Becky got a piece of this. Yeah, I'll put it in here. And what else do I have here? Beans. Oops, what's all? Oh, what's this is coming out of this. Let's see. Here's some flat back. Flat back pearls. We'll keep these out. And I'm losing my way here. What else do I have in here? Buttons. You don't want to put too many heavy. I might make some fabric buttons and put on here. Um, I think I'm going, if you use buttons, you want to use small flat ones. You don't want very many heavy ones. So I'll come back to the buttons another time. Here's a round piece of lace. And here's another pretty piece of lace. I'm just looking at the, I think these are all buttons down at the bottom. I need to find a place to put them. And this was this up here, only I cut the eyelet off of it. So we're going to put that back in the bag. I got a big old piece of it. And let's start on mine. I kind of like that. Do I like it down? This is the bottom down here. You can't see there's big long fringe hanging down. Maybe right at there. I like it there. Let's pin it. This I got out, but it's really too big. So we'll put that back. I got, ooh, look. I got another more maroonish colored. 
kind of like that in between. Don't know if I like it there. We'll think about that. I kind of like the idea of it mirroring, but I don't know if I want to take up that much space. Maybe a couple pieces. We'll save that one out. And let's see what else do we have here. Uh, do I want that one there? I kind of like the idea of putting this one here. Kind of hiding it underneath of the. And let that hang down that way. This, this is almost too much. Let's put it over on mine for now. See, I've got all sorts of stuff. You just can't use everything. You want to. This was a cluster I started. You want to use it all. You want to use it all. But you can't. Look at this. Isn't that beautiful? Got two of them. I can make 10 million. I'm going to save out this green seam binding. Because that will go on there someplace. It's all mixed up in the... That might be fun to couch around. Becky was saying, couch around fabric, Mary. This is kind of too clunky for me for right now. Uh, I like this little daisy trim, though. I might put some daisy trim in here. There and there. Let's... Let's pin it on and snip it off. I got a little piece of my tatting. Put it on mine. Maybe somewhere in there. Uh, ooh, this is beautiful. This has to go on here. Let's put that up there. I'm not sure where to put that right now or this. All right, I need my scissors. I'm going to snip this here. I'm going to put daisy trim down there. I kind of want that flower to show a little. Do I like that? I'm wondering if I take two of these off. That's almost too much. that down there. Maybe those other two I'll put over here. Somehow. I only need one. Maybe they're facing different directions. Where's my scissors? Let's snip this. Put that one that way and that one this way. Like that. I'm just pinning these on. I'll have to think about them for a little while. I might adjust things later. But this will get me started on it. I like this up here. I like this piece. This is this is for me. <laughs> she says selfishly. Well, I like all the flowers that I put over here. I need a flower. I have this daisy one. 
I don't know. I'll come back to the flower. Hold on, I'm dropping stuff. What else do I have in here? Buttons and... Oh, this is stuff I'm putting back. I don't know if I want any of that on there or not yet. I was going to put some up here, but... Do I... What did I knock off? There's a, a sort of a flower. Becky crocheted her flowers. Let's see what else I have in here. A little piece of fabric. A little tape. And then these, I'm not going to... should put those back with the trim. This is a beautiful piece. Way too big for me. Could cut that out, but I don't want to destroy it. This is pretty. This is pretty. I don't want to cover up too much, though. It's too blingy for me for right now. Uh, beautiful pieces here. There's some black. I might save that out. There's some ruffle stuff. I'm not big on ruffle. That'll go back in the bag. I'll probably tear it apart. Here's a flower I can put on here. Maybe up in there. I'll move this one over a little. I'm just auditioning for now. I might move all this stuff around later. I like this flower up in here. <clears throat> oh, my brother's up and coughing. I don't know if I like those. I like this one. I think I'll take that one off. Maybe put it over here. I kind of like that. Kind of gives it a bottom. We'll put it there for now. And I don't know about this. Tatted piece, I could cut the, I, I stopped. I was doing good and I stopped. I think I ran out of thread and I never picked it up again. Little piece of maroon. I don't want to get too much on that. That's a possibility. Here's a an embroidered piece. This would make a base of one. And some black satin goldy brown. That's pretty, but but and this is very boho-ish. This is part of a tie, I think. And I don't want to cover everything up. I think I'm getting to the end of my world here. Because I want to do some work in here. It's, a, it's pretty. It's very pretty. That would have gone nice up at the top. For another one. I'm just looking through here. There's a red heart. I didn't think I did that at Valentine. Here's another flower. It's kind of puffy, but it's mine. I could take this centerpiece out. I think it's plastic. I think that's plastic in there. But I'd have to I'd have to sew all the pieces together again. It's a plastic piece right there. Well, too much to worry about. Some trim. I'm just looking at each piece and what I want. This is pretty. Keep that out. There's some black trim. I'll probably use this someplace. Maybe right up at the top here. It's not black, it's dark green. We'll keep that out. This would be nice to couch. It's another. This would be nice to go on my 
journal. It just is an edge I tore off of something. Red. Uh -uh. And this folds into a circle real nice. I think I'll put this with my my journal stuff. And here's, I think I want this one at the top. No, I don't. Not unless I moved everything down a little. And see, I saved this, but I can't see, I can't see putting this on. It's too much. I guess I could cut the fringe off a little, but see, this is what happens. Let's put this. What? Look at that. It's missing this piece. If I put that piece on there, it just, it says yes. On me, please. Here I've got it. Here's a little butterfly. This go, this is not a tatted one. This could go right in here. Let's put that butterfly right there. And here are those flat backed pearls. I can put this in here, on here, because this will go in my journal. And I don't need all of them. So let's, I have to decide what I want here. Two of them. I don't know. I have to think about those. All right, let's put all these back into my sack. Get them off of my desk. All beautiful pieces. And that's just one sack of them. That's just one sack. Put this plastic flower in here. No, he belongs down there. Maybe this could come up a little higher. I think I'm going to cut. Where's my scissors? Where did they go off to? Oh, they're up at the top. Put that in there. This, this is gold and green in here. It almost looks like it's faded or fallen off, but it isn't. It's gold and green. That's going back in the sack. Hold on a minute. This is going back in the sack. I want to trim. I don't want it so square. I'm going to trim this off the square part and make it more roundy. We don't want to cut the flower. It was a piece of lace. And it's just the backing of the lace. What time is it? 8.27. I'm only going till... Well, I can go a little after 9. Uh, I do have something else I want to do this morning. I don't want to cut the lacy part. Flower part. I can cut the lace. There. There. Whoops, got one more piece over here. Come on. A little bit of thread where he was hang stitched on with. So I think that'll look better. Cut this little snippet here. Doesn't there again? I think that'll look better in there, more roundy. I kind of like that. Then I can see some stitching, maybe some French knots, maybe some of the fly stitches or chain stitches that Becky did. 
Let's pin these on. I like the butterfly there. He just he just compliments it. He just puts the finishing touch on it, that butterfly, and then this up here. And this might be all I do on this rather than other than the stitching. Uh, I might put something in in the centers here like a little flat back pearl would look nice on there let's see hold on let me put this piece on get in there doesn't like to go through all those threads gotta find a good hole for him to go through Might have to watch that I don't pick, prick myself on that. So I wish you all a good Friday. Because today is good Friday. Let's see. Maybe a, maybe just a hanging down. Let's cut a couple of these off and see. They'd have to be glued down. There's no way I can stitch these down. strip they're flat back so right in here hanging down in between the, and I'd only have to oh I could stitch in between I can stitch these down only I think I'll just stitch the top two and let them hang and let's see let's do one, two, three, four, five, six. So, oh, look, I have just enough. Well, no, I can stitch in this way. So, one, two, three, two, four, five to here. And I think I'll call this piece done. I think I'm happy with it. And we'll get it stitched. And I don't know. If, I think we're only swapping one. But I feel like I could do more. I'll have to go in and trim the little threads a little bit more. Let's see. I think I can pin it. If I'm careful. Maybe I want to go the other way. And there. And go over that thread. And I'll stitch it. In between for the first two and let the others hang with the needle in there or with the pin in there it's going to be kind of crooked and I'll have to move it over a little it's kind of getting in the way of that let's we'll see I don't know if I like it clear out to the edge or not yeah, but we'll we'll do it, and if I don't like them, I'll take them off. Yeah. Come on, don't be mean to me. Now they'll hang better once they're stitched because I've used the needles to put, or the pins to put these on. They're not hanging, but you get the idea. Now I don't need any in there. I just need two more. I cut more than I needed. I might use them over here. 
This one looks kind of bare. Mine needs more work. <laughs> but I don't know if I like that one there or not. Mine needs more work. Now I'm going to take it off for now. Let's see, I just need two more here. We'll put this here for now. I don't know if I like it there, but I need a place to put it. Put them, two of them. Oh, I pinned the fabric and not the trying to pin between the threads. So I wish you all a good Friday. Dee Dee's going to get plants today. Becky fed the birds and went and helped her mother-in-law get groceries, I think. And I don't know what she's doing this weekend. Uh, what are you all doing this weekend? I don't like that there, but I needed a place to put it. All right, here's my other two. Let's, this one's going to fall out. I'm thinking here. I might have to stitch three down. I kind of want them to hang. I'm not sure about having it on the end there. And I'll probably adjust these further as I get to working. Where's my other one? There it is. I kind of like this. I kind of like it. So the only other thing I want to put on here are some stitches. I think the fly stitch that Becky was doing would look real nice on here because it's the, you know, it's got a lot of movement on this piece and a fly stitch flies. I'll put one more piece on here. We're going to call it done for now. There we go. I don't know who will get it. Some French knots, I think, in here. Some fly stitches, some running stitches. Yeah. Maybe outline this with some embroidery thread, although it's got black around. I'm going to leave the leaves. I think the the French knots would look good in here. Maybe between. So yeah, I'm liking this. Let's turn it over. So this is how it looks on the back so far. That flower sticks out a little. I might move it over so that so that the petals don't get. I don't know about letting the petals go off to the end or not. I could move it over and put this one on top. We'll play with it later. But I'm liking that. I'm pretty proud of it. Now this one needs work. But I think I'll play with it another day. And I still have stuff. I still have stuff. Let's put this flower back up here. I think I've got other flowers. I just don't, I didn't go through all my boho stuff here yet. It needs some stuff in here. I haven't even touched my ties. Um, I've got some black, where did I do with it? that black? 
I like this. It's really a dark green. I do like this. I'm not sure where I'm going to put it. Probably up here. Oops, this is not stitched pinned down. Let's pin this down. So I, do, I have one more thing I want to do before I sign off today. Boy, the time goes fast when you're doing all this stuff. I did that borrow, and I showed you all my slow stitching. That took some time. So I, I, I want to do more. Uh, what else did I say about here? This is pretty, but I don't know if it goes on this piece or not. Be pretty hanging down here instead of those beads. And I've covered up my pretty piece here. I'm going to have to readjust all of this. So, oh, and I got this piece too. So, I'll see. We will see. We'll put that. Um, I really need another bag. I need another bag for these. Uh, let's combine this and this. Use this bag. I'll take all of this and put it in here. That worked. I could do a hundred of these. Make a big quilt like Becky's inspiration piece. Take me forever. I I don't need another project. I don't need another project, Mama. I've got enough projects to last me until sundown. <laughs> These are all ties. I don't want to put those in there. I guess I'll squeeze them in here. Well, those ties could go. No, oh, no, I want to come back to those, maybe. And then I still got... I still got pieces here. Let's let's wrap. Let's do a little wrapping here. So I have all my because it's all falling. What else do I have down here? I've got we didn't even get to the jewelry. A lot of this stuff is too heavy. I like this. This would be you know, this would be nice to put on slow stitch on let's get it out I might save this piece out I keep looking at it I got a whole bunch of this that I got from Pearl isn't that beautiful oh that would make a nice boho square oh let's save this out and this is all the beads and everything so all of this is going to there's a flower that I can put on mine it's a bit the base of a flower. Here's some needlework, needlepoint, cactus. Yeah. Here's these pieces. These are so pretty. I don't know about sending this through the mail though. It's pretty stiff. I'd have to put it in a padded envelope. It's kind of heavy. We'll get. We'll come back to the jewelry pieces later. All right. This goes up here. I don't know if I can bundle all that. I think I'm down at the bottom of it all. Except for my jewelry. I think. I'm not totally sure. At least try. You know, I should fold this out one more. Hold on, Mary's not done with this yet. I'm going to save this piece out. Let's put it. This is a beautiful piece. Let's put it like this. 
something like this. Fold this up. Oh. It's going to make a pillow. And I need a tie. I don't think a pen will hold. It'll probably fall out, but at least it's in a bundle that I'm going to put with my other bundles. Get it off my desk. And, and these are pieces that I'm working on. What happened to that green? I'm going to put this, this in here. And I don't want to spill my pens. What will happen to my lid? So I'm pretty proud of this piece. Um, I guess I will stitch these down because they're going to flop around. I'm pretty proud of this piece. Um, yeah, I think this will be a nice, a nice piece for swap. That's a piece that needed to go in. We'll just put it here. And I guess I'll put this in. I want to save this. I might start another one. This depends. I'm not going to start another one until I get these two done. That I get ahead of myself and then I get overwhelmed. Come on, get in there. Nice. I got this. Is This is off of a duvet cover or some sort of an ottoman or duvet cover. And it's a huge piece and I got it from Pearl. This piece. And I, so I've got a lot more of that. Put this in here. So we're going to move on to something else. Let me come out and check chat here in a minute. Let me put this away. So I've got a good start on the piece that I'm going to swap. I'll probably try to finish that first. So I'll have it ready to go. And then I'll work on mine. And then if I want to do another piece on that maroonish fabric, I'll work on that. Where's my lid? Here. Oh, look. Red lace. Well, we'll tuck it in here because I bundled up my other. And look, there's this. I'm always finding stuff. Those two go on the tray. I got something else I want to do today before I leave. Hold on. Let me put these in here. Although they really aren't. I'm not planning to put these on, on these, but... They're just out in my way, so I want to get them. I'll just get in there somehow. So I don't want to bundle this up because I want it where I can get at it. I guess I sealed that good, didn't I? I do the craziest stuff. All right, let's get this off my desk, all the slow stitch stuff. If I can. And there's my pattern, let me, or one of my patterns, let me just tuck it in there. And I'll keep my scissors out, those out. These I'm going to put with my fabric stuff because I'm just cutting fabric with these. But I cut denim with them and I thought twice, but I did it. So let me get my other project out I want to do. Which means I've got to move this tray. Hold on. Ah. I can do this without spilling everything. always a, a pain. Mm. All right, hope I don't spill. There. Now I need some space. Yeah. All right, what I have that I want to work on 
because I've been going through this box of stash and this is really from my batiking. I might have to zoom out a little. Help me zoom out a little. Oop, a little more. Oop. How is that? And you can see as I go through here, there's a lot of wax splatter here. <coughs> I'm going to make a journal. And let's do a, this might be a front porch journal. It might be something I'll wipe off, paint wipe off journal. I'm not sure. But I got a lot of, when I batiked, this was the paper that I ironed the wax off with. And I need to do more batiking, but let's use this stuff up. I put it in a box, and the box was sitting out in the back porch. And I really need to clean some of this stuff up. Either use it or lose it. I'm going to use it. So let's build some signatures here. And that they don't have to be perfect. And I've already gone through, so I know generally what I want to do here. And I might rip deco my edges here. But some of these, look, some of the color came off on there. See, look, isn't that pretty? And some of it's torn. But I can see my hand through this. I don't know if you guys can see my hand. Um, but that's transparent because of the wax. And this is a little transparent, yeah, over here. I thought this would be fun for a, I don't know if I want it for a wipe off journal though, um, because if I wipe off, I'll be, I want to, I want to think about what I'm putting on these pages. And here's some tissue that obviously wasn't a part of the the teaching process, but we're going to put it in there. I'm going to save this one out. So this, this is probably a pretty good signature here. And I, I might leave the pages rough like that, or I might tear them. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, seven, no six. Hold on. I want too far. No. There. One, two, three, four, five. Five pages in a signature. That's a pretty good signature. Look, it looks like a G. I think it is a G. I need to get my batik stuff out. I got it. It's just in a big box. All right, let's do another signature. This one is really, you can really see through up here. I don't know if you guys can see, but when I hold it up to the light, I can see my hand under it. One. Oh, and I've got some of these county register. Two. We'll put the county registers in here. In between. Three. Let's grab the cover. This was for the fall. I like these county registers because they're about the size of my journals. And they, they got interesting stuff in them. Was that four? Five. Oh, I needed that tissue. Let's put the tissue in between these two. One, two, three. Four. Five. 
We'll let the county register be the... Let's turn it this way, though. The centerpiece. And, yeah, I'll probably have to cut some of this off. But we're, we're just going to kind of get it organized for right now. Kind of going every which way on me when I try to do them all at once. Sort of like that. I'll have to, when I bind it, straighten it out. I'm just kind of building the signature right now. Look at that, that cool. Isn't that cool? That'll be the, this'll be the cover. I get, ooh, the, the cool part's right in the center. All right, well, we'll let this be the front, like this. And we'll do this, and then we'll do one of these. This is three. Uh, these county registers are a little shorter. And then I have some, this was churches. I think I have a book of churches. Um, maybe I'll go back and put these inside of the signatures. I've got four, five, five. Ooh, I love that church building. They're church buildings. The two of them here are just one. I guess it's just one. They're just extra pages that I had. I won't go back in and put it in the signature after I get them built. One. Two. Three. It's nine o'clock. Let me finish what I'm doing here. Tonight. Tonight, I'm going to stream at 7.30 this evening, and we'll be doing a postcard. Legia sent me a postcard, so I want to do a postcard for her. I, I sent her one as a part of a giveaway, but uh, I, I say, if you guys send me a postcard, I'll send you one back. And Legia sent me a postcard, so I'm going to send her one back. So we're going to be working on postcard, and I'll have a giveaway tonight. I usually try to do a postcard giveaway on Friday night. So we'll be working on that. And I'm just putting these signatures together for right now. I'm not, I'm gonna bind them into a journal that I can play in. And I might just leave it all rough like this. I might put fabric pieces on here. I might paint. I might draw. I might do melted crayon. Um, this is just going to be a playground. It's going to be a playground. I need to use up this paper, and I hate wasting it. Look, that one's torn. We'll use that in a second. I hate wasting. I hate wasting it. There's too much... These were packing sheets, I believe. I got a big package of them at Menards when I was doing batik work because they soaked up the wax when I ironed it. And I probably still have more around here. I'd like to do more batiking. 
I just, and I want to get into some felting too. Beth Schuler is a felter and I always, uh, I always wanted to felt along with her and I never quite got there. I always got distracted. All right, I'm out of, so we're just going to do these. I don't think I have any more special pages to go in there. So this is going to be quite a large journal, but I'm going to, I'm going to use this stuff up too. Three. I'm not going to bind it. I'm just building the signatures. Four. I love it how I love this stuff. It's just special in and of itself. Now, I probably would not put anything like this in my stitch journal. I don't see where it might, because most of the wax is ironed off of this. It just leaves this oily residue. Do I have five? One. I think I only have four. Look at how waxy, I mean, how transparent. There is a little wax on here, but not much. It's mostly just the oil. And I could probably use those paint. Look at this. Isn't that cool? Even the torn part is cool. I don't have to go on the inside. I don't have to go on the inside. I'm getting down to the bottom. What's down here? Oh, I have a plastic sack. And it's, it's a church pages that I can put in the... I don't know. I might make a separate journal here. I'll save those back. Where? <laughs> Where am I going to put it? Back in the box, but for right now, they're going there. And so a lot of these pages are torn, but I still like them. Uh, let's do it that way. And this way, that's three, four. This one, this page is cool. Four. I think I'll put that in the center. I'm going to use that as a center page. This is four. about down to the bottom. One, two, boy, this is really oily. Probably have to do crayon on that one. Look at this. Isn't that pretty? Let me make that a center page. How is it that we get excited with wipe off. <laughs> Iron off in this case. One, two, three, four. I'm going to make this one the outer side. It was just an extra piece I don't think I used. And what do I have left here? One, two, might have a small signature here. Plastic. Three. Three is a good number. Dropping stuff here. All right. So there's that. So I've got how many signatures? One. Two. Three. Four, five, six, seven. I think I'm going to leave that on top. Eight, nine. Nine signatures. It's going to make a good play journal, won't it? And I was thinking this for the outside. It's just a big packing paper. So let's, let's cut it to size. And it doesn't matter that it's folded lumpy. Let's grab one here. Make it a little bit longer. Oh, look. It'll be perfect here. Let's grab this. And... Cut. 
how nice this is. Whoops, not going to I'm going to cut it a little longer. And since I'm going to, let me just whack this off. Since I only need a cover, I'm going to give myself a little bit more because I folded that in half. I want, I want a little. And it doesn't matter that if the pages stick out. Let's cut it here. I'm just whacking at it to get it down to size here. Get this. I'll save this and maybe go inside of something. I'll probably need it someday for a scavenger hunt journal. Use brown packing paper. And go back in my box too. All right, now let's just cut. Let's cut here. I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing. This part here I might toss just because I've got so much. Right now I'm just getting it down to size where I can handle it better throw this away. Gotta throw something away. Can't keep it all. That's what I'm trying to do is go through stuff that I kept. I need to get upstairs and it's cooling, not warm enough now I can get up there and work. All right. So this is going back on the signature that I pulled it out of. I like that. Oh, you know, and I did not allow for a big spine here. So I might have to use the other half of that. But it might, oh, I didn't allow. So I might have to, I, I just measured the sheet. And I didn't do very good measuring. So let's work the other half of this. Did I fold it up? And I think I did. Put it in here. Hold on. We might have to use this after all. Oh. And you know what? I didn't do this good. I might have to go with another type of paper. I'm not happy with that. Or even a piece of fabric. But for now, I need a wrap around here. For now, this will be fine. The other thing I could do is tear these. But I don't think I want to. So, there we go. There's that, at least to this point. Let's put a band around it, if I can, without it being too... Yeah. It'll, it'll curl it up. Hold on. Hold on, Mary says. Hold on. I got something. Oh, but it's three miles away. We won't do that. And I don't know what I did with the other. Did I put it? Look. My brother tore apart a clock for me. Ooh, that clock face would be nice. Ouch! Knocked my knee. The clock stopped working. And I want the... I want the face out of it. I want the face. And I don't know if I can get it out. Knife. 
think that's in the is it in the water? No. I'm looking for it. I put my big fabric scissors in there, taking up my room and my what I did with my palette knife. I don't know if that's glued in there. It looks like it's glued in there. I might have to just take a hammer. I don't need this tray part. I might take it outside and just break that plastic. This part I can, I can glue this. It is glass. Let's take the little screws. And fill underneath. Let's keep the hands out. I'll put these little screws in. I got a little tray over on my other desk. And I can put these in. So I might take this. I have to clean it up. It's dusty. And just glue it in there. I don't have a glass bottom tray. It's dirty. It's dusty. That's another to do. And this I'm going to, um, I'm going to save these out. This I'm going to take outside and I think I'm going to have to break this to get the, the face off. I don't care because I don't care about all this stuff in here. It quit working on him. So we'll deal with that later. I have something else. I don't know what I did with it. Hold on. And what I'm going to do too is I have packages of papers, you know, odd papers that I've been saving. All right, hold on. Let me stand up here. I want to show you this. I've been making scribble journals. That's a. This is my Shakespeare book. I need to start drawing in that again. But I need a new scribble journal, and I've been putting them together. Let me find a place for this book. I don't know if that's a good place or a bad place, but it's there. And I did these kind of when I was sorting out that box of stuff behind me. But I got three, and I really like this. And what I did is I cut the envelope off and made it a a place to write. And then it has all these wonderful cards. And this was a box of cards. These came from my ex-sister-in-law. She's passed away. But all of these were done by this artist. I think I left his attribution here in one of these. And I, I don't know which one I left it in. But then I took part of the envelope, the back of the envelope, part of it, one of the envelopes, or someplace I got this paper. I think it was an extra envelope. And I put here so I can write around, because these are the backing pieces here. I thought I had one where I left the artist of these cards. But maybe I didn't. Maybe I was just thinking it. But this, this will make a nice scribble journal. And then here's a 4th of July one I've been using up. I've got cards that I got at the Goodwill. But these came from my ex-sister-in-law. And I'm going to use these. Here's another. Maybe it was this one that I left the attribution in. Let's see. I guess not. It's here somewhere. Oh, here. Here. Uh, view of the countryside in 
Casablanca, Hungary, as Hungarian Labor Service Company 109-13 departs on the morning of April 20th, 1942. United States Holocaust Memorial Museum, gift of the estate of George Bayfield. George Bayfield was the artist who did all of these. And it has to do with World War II and the Holocaust and all of that. But I like the, you know, he didn't let the war interfere with his art. He went on. He moved on, which is what I need to do. What time is it? It's 9.14. I might, I might bind these or start binding them because I want to go just a little bit longer this morning because I haven't been streaming this week. And I'll bind this offline. I think I'm going to try to make a wraparound for it. But maybe not until I get ready to finish it off because I want to be able to open it up and work in it. So this is just going to be a playground. I'm going to put it behind me. And let's go for some of that crochet thread that I put off my desk. I'm going to sneeze. Excuse me. Let's go for this blue. Let's go for the blue. And let me sanitize my hands here. I need to anyway because I'm handling all those papers and stuff. When I made those carrot muffins, they called for buttermilk. And we don't use buttermilk as a general rule. <laughs> Excuse me. We do not use uh, buttermilk. So I bought some lemon juice and threw it in my half and half. I bought lemons. So I've been, they were selling them and a package of four. And I didn't need four lemons. I only need a half of a lemon and I put the rest of it in here. I got three lemons left. I think I'm gonna be drinking lemon water. You can put lemon on fish, but we don't eat that much fish. I guess I could squeeze it on my salad, make me a salad dressing. All right, let me come out and chat, see what's going on in chat. I appreciate those of you who are spending your part of your Friday with me, part of your good Friday. I wish you all a good weekend. Let me fix my quality here. It's only a 144. Let's go back to 1080. Hi, Katia. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Katia is our tatting instructor for the needle tatting. She is doing a Katia. I've been practicing butterflies. I'm going to put some butterflies in my slow stitch. And Katia, since you're here, I want to ask, are you going to have a video in here where you show how to build that journal or should we go ahead and just build it ourselves i want to start putting my butterflies and my practice pieces in a journal she says good morning kimberly says back busy bee becky says i've completed my background stitching on my blocks and posted a photo on my community tab. Well, let's go look. Beautiful, beautiful. Becky does beautiful boho squares. Let's see what she's done. She put them on her community tab. So let me go to Becky's channel and search for Becky. She's right here. And Oh, you know what? I'm in the wrong. Let me go to my, I'm in my account that I watch news and everything but art on another channel. Let me go to my, hold on. Let me switch accounts. I could have gone to Becky from, from there, but 
I get off into everything anyway. There she is right up at the top where she should be. So there's Becky right here. It, let's go to her community tab. Oh. Oh, let me stand up. Let me stand up so you guys can see. Look at these. Aren't they beautiful? Look at that she's done here. These are Becky's bohos. Beautiful colors. Look, she's got the beading. Should they go this way, Becky? Are the beads on the bottom? Or are they on the top? I think she put the beads out to the side so that they would show. Beautiful, Becky. Let's I'm on my phone, so I, I can't get a a full image here. Very nice, Becky. Very, very nice. I love them. So I'm gonna finish. I'm gonna finish mine before I start another one. Uh, I'm gonna finish the one that I pinned together this morning. I think I'm happy with it. Mine needs a little bit more work, and then I might make one, one more. We'll see. I think she wants to mail them before April 15th. Is that right, Becky? Brenda says, no big plans here. She's plant shopping for tomatoes. You guys are all going plant shopping down south. It's too early for us. We'll probably get another snow. Although, it's going to be nice this week, but you never trust it. It's, it's only the end of March. It can still snow up here in Nebraska. Although it's supposed to get up to 65 today, but you would get nice day. We're in that stage where you get a couple days of nice weather and then a couple days of snow and freezing and then a you know up and down weather. Let's see what else is going on. Yeah, the beads are at the bottom. She just put them over to the side so you could see the whole piece. Katia says, it looks nice, Becky. April 15th is the mailing deadline. The sign-up deadline is April 7th. So, y'all, if you want to do a boho, you know, go searching around your stash and, and uh, do boho. Here's little Derwin. Looking, checking out the countryside here. What else is going on out there? Joyce is here. Mina's here. Roy says he's got to run, but they can go do his errands for the day before the day gets too busy. Have a contemplative Good Friday. Roy wants you to think about Good Friday. <laughs> think about it, he says. Becky says, now I'm on to adornment, beading, and applique flowers. So she's not done with her. She's going to, she's got more to put on there. So, Brenda, Roy says, it's been so gloomy here, rain every weekend, and it's always very, very windy. Mother Nature is upset with us, for sure. <laughs> well, we appreciate the rain because we've had, it gets so hot in the summer. Um, we've had some dry years. Let's see. Let me reach over here for my, somewhere over here. Let me stand up. I got to reach. Oh, I've got to clean off this cart. My projects just pile up over here. <laughs> I'm going to get my. We're doing postcards tonight. I'm going to have a giveaway. I'm going to have two giveaways tonight. And for those of you that are in here, if you're interested in being a part of the giveaway, I'll probably do it. I think I'm going to be doing them around 830. So that's. That's a pretty good time because 8.30 is 6.30 on the West Coast and 9.30 on the East Coast. So that's kind of a good time to have a giveaway. Did that straighten out my desk or make it worse? That made it worse. It needs to go this way, Mary. Should straighten the phone instead of the desk. All right. So let's just, this shouldn't take long to do. Uh, I'm just going to do a pamphlet stitch in these. 
I need a clip. Maybe I'll use a bobby pin. Uh, dig here, see if I've got some down at the bottom of the barrel. Usually they fall down. I have to dig out more if I've got some loose ones. Two should be enough. I need to clean this top drawer again. Oops, I want my scissors out. This shouldn't take long. Yeah. I found my yes paste. It was here all along. I just couldn't put my hands on it. See the nice long reach of these bobby pins? That's why I like them. They're the three inch bobby pins. And I like that they have a long reach. The paper clips, unless you get those huge paper clips, do not have that long, long reach. And I'm just going to do a, a three-hold pamphlet stitch here. And I like to go in from both directions. Because, see, I always I go in this way, but I have trouble coming back through with my needle. So, unless I find the hole here. Come on. See, it's always off a little. And I double my thread, so. And uh, right about there. And I do like to put tassels on my. You should see, I got me a nice little pile of scribble journals. I bundle them together. They'll probably get thrown in the trash when I'm gone all my recorded days of my life I put I call them the scribbles from my daily life it might be a little low but so this is the top whoops did I do that down at the bottom I did oh well doesn't matter I'm not going to put a tassel down at the bottom I'll just leave it it's just a scribble journal I just I scribble quotes, things I want to remember, something I want to remember about the day. This is an envelope here. That's why that's... Let's come down a little bit more here. And can't go back through it. I always have trouble going back through these. That's why I try to poke it from both directions. So that's right there. So I should be able to get my tool in there, but it whoops. It didn't it didn't tear it, it just didn't go through it. There. And if I go through from both directions, I have a better chance of getting my needle through. And then what I do, I'm on these, not all my journals, but most of them, I, I make my tassel right as a part of the journal. And the way I do that, you guys have seen me do this before. Let me find the, the thread. Where is it at? It's got to be one of these. Here it is. So generally when you do uh, pamphlet stitching with no tassel, you measure three times the length of your journal. So one, get my Penelope, you're gonna fall. Two, you, you leave it, get a, a little bit of a width, extra width. And I'm gonna put this thread in my lap less chance of it falling three and that would be about the length of the, your thread just to if you're not going to make a tassel but I make a tassel so I go three four five 
six, seven, eight, nine. I do 15 of them. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And then I take and I double that because that'll make a nice tassel. So I'm doubling it, hold on. Double, double, toil and trouble. That's what it ends up. It's a long thread to, to, but I've gotten so that I can work with pretty long threads, especially when I'm tatting. Katia says, Mary, you're doing a, a true ring, are you? No, nope, no true rings. we That's what she taught us last week, was how to do the true ring. All right. So here's my long, long thread. And I've generally gotten used to working with long threads. You just have to keep things clear on your desk. Go slow. I'm kind of trying to make sure this is Keep your thread tangle free as much as you can. I'm going to put this skein of thread down. And we got a big needle here with the curvy point. I like using those. Big needle with the curvy point. And I should be able to thread this through. I thread both ends through. Leave yourself a, a long thread. Now... I make sure I'm using the top here. This is the top of my journal here. I go in the second one. I put two at the top. I only should put one at the bottom. I goofed down there, but we're only going to use the bottom one. So just pull it through, pull it through gently, and try to keep it off of things on your desk, away from things that it can catch on. Pull it through gently. And sometimes I find if my thread starts to, to tangle, it's, this isn't, but if it does, if I put my thumb right close to where, and I find this in stitching too, or sometimes when I'm stitching, I'll hold that thread like this as I'm pulling it through. So I can pull it through fast like this. And this kind of, if it starts to tangle, I, it, the reason, the fact that it's in between my two fingers prevents it tangling so much. See, here's a tangle coming. And it just, it kind of finds its way. And even when it's more tangly. And I'm getting down to the end here. Now I'm going to leave that loop. I'm going to leave that loop there. In fact, I'm going to hook it on this bobby pin. Right there. And then we're going to come back up, and this is where, this is where, when I'm going through these, I always have trouble coming from the back to the front. And that's why, and I didn't here, good. So now, see if I just kind of keep a finger or a thumb here as I'm pulling it through. And see, here's a big wad of thread coming. And the very fact that I have my fingers there kind of guides it. So where's my thread? Kind of guides it. So at least if you're starting to knot, you can feel it. But it just kind of guides it through so it doesn't knot up on you as bad. And I find that when I'm slow stitching, especially if I'm doing a lot of running stitches, this technique helps me a lot if I'm using a long thread. See how it's, it wants to tangle in there. And if I didn't have my fingers there, it'd probably make a knot. And there we go. Uh, let's straighten that out a little, though. There. Now, I'm going to take this loop off. I'm going to thread my needle through that loop. And this is called a blind knot. See how tangly that is there? Kind of pull those loose. Shake them loose, Becky. Shake it, shake it, shake it. I'm just kind of pulling it through. 
And I find if I keep my hand, it just kind of, it kind of guides it through so it doesn't knot up on you. And just kind of pull it through that way and pull it tight and you have a nice little knot there without having to tie a knot. And we're going to go through the center one. Yeah, I'm done with those bobby pins. Let's take them out. Put them over. Over there. And where am I going here? Good thing I have long fingers. I gotta find my needle. I'm just kind of pulling it through. See, there's a knot coming there. And I might have to pull this one and twist it. Shake her out. When you shake your thread like that, it loosens up those threads. And sometimes you can shake it so that you shake out the... It's not a knot, it's a twist. I call a twist a knot wannabe. <laughs> it's a, it wants to be a knot. A twist wants to be a knot. And you don't want to let it get there. This is a simple pamphlet stitch. Oops, what did I do here? I hooked it onto the envelope. There. And it's coming out the center there. So this is really a trick to with working, holding it there, with working with these long threads. Now I'm coming from the back again. And the other thing is to punch both sides of your of your holes there. And I don't know if I did that down it. There it goes. So we're going to come through here. And just sometimes I drop my needle because I'm pulling the thread from underneath there. And I kind of just keep my thumb, keep that thread going underneath of my thumb there. And that kind of keeps it from knotting. So I'm piling it up over here which can cause a knot just kind of shake her out shake it out we don't want to hook it around the book don't want to hook it around a ruler keep as many things off your desk as possible because your thread will catch on to it and I have such a small desk that it's not always possible to clear the entire desk off while I'm doing this there's a knot wannabe And see, he wants to be a knot. Don't let him get there. And there we go. Now we want to go back up through the center. You guys know how to do this. I, I don't really need to tell you. But we're going to anyway. Go back up through here. You can kind of tighten this as you go. I haven't really pull pulling on... Pulling on this thread down here will tighten this, and pulling on this will tighten the lower one. But I usually do that toward the end. Let me get my thread straightened out here. I'm going to have an issue. And most people do not do these long, long threads, but I like to make a tassel right onto my journals, especially my scribble journals. Some journals, when you want them to lie flat, and if you're working in them and doing art in them, the tassel gets in the way. So I don't put them on all my journals, but I usually do because I've gotten to the point to where I work loose leaf, and then I'll bind everything at the end. Now we just need to go back. Now you can either put it through again, this is the back top, or you can just start tying right here. And I'm not going to go back through because this is envelope paper and cards would be okay. But we're just going to go under and 
pull it through. All these not wannabes. And we'll straighten, we'll tighten my stitches after I do this. Although they're pretty tight. They're pretty tight in here. I'm not too worried about them. Now I'm going to make the tassel. So I take the top, this is the top of my journal, and I put it facing my right hand because I'm right-handed. And then I start, bring my thread down to the length that I kind of think I want my tassel about like that, depending on the size of your journal, and hold it there and make a loop. Then you want to knot it. And you can do it different ways. I like to come under under here to start out with. Now, kind of keep that because I'm going to tie a knot here. I'm going to start out with a shoelace knot, but I want to keep this loop. So kind of just pull it like that. I came over and under that little half inch stitch there. Kind of pull it through, pull it through, pull it through. And now I have this and I have my needle thread and I'm just going to tie a shoelace knot. And that'll, that's kind of loose there. Let's see if I can tighten that up. Which one is it? Hold on. It's this one. It's fairly, it's not tight, tight, but it's tight enough for me. I need three hands here. I'm just going to make a shoelace knot. There. It's pretty tight. All right. So now I have all this thread on my needle. Yards and yards of it, Katia. Oh, Katia, are you going to show us how, when we, we were doing that Anacar stitch, and you were saying you could handle the, I'd like to see you demonstrate that. Because you need to do those true rings, and you have all this thread. I, I, I don't really care for true rings myself, because you have you have to work with all this bundle of thread. And you were saying you could put that bundle and use it like a shuttle. And I don't think I mastered that. I don't know if she heard that or not, but I'm not following chat. I want to get this tassel made. It is 941. I just got to let me finish this tassel and then I'll go off. So I made another loop. And this time I'm going to come under and see how I, my thread makes a loop here. I'm going under my half stitch and through the needle thread and the thread on, I've got two, two threads here off my needle. And I just come through them and that makes a knot. Kind of hold on to this stuff here. Where's my needle? Just come through like that and it'll make a knot. Pull it, pull it, pull it. Shouldn't take too long to finish this off. See, it made a knot there. And I just keep doing that. And the thread gets easier to work with as it gets shorter. See, I bring in the I bring the thread down. I make a loop down here at the bottom. Let me pull my needle up here. Get it. It's hooked on to my desk over here. I've got a pin, a straight pin, and it's holding on to it. It will find every loose object on your desk. So you make another loop. Pull it up. Here's one side of the thread and here's the other side. You go under the half inch in between your two threads. 
and just pull it through and that'll make a knot. And that way you knot every loop that you make and your tassel won't break. Because it's all knotted up in there. And let's do another one. See if I can't get this done before 10 o'clock. My brother turns on the TV at 10. So I'll just keep going here, my two threads, and I'm going in between them. Now, I'm not pulling the loop threads tight. You don't want to pull those tight. You just let those hang. And you just keep off of this long thread that I have here. I just keep making loops. You let those hang. Try to make them all the same size. They'll be clipped anyway. You make a loop. This is part of the loop thread, and this is my needle thread. I go underneath my half stitch in between my loop thread and my needle thread. Pull it tight. The, the more you do this, the easier it gets because your thread gets shorter. And it's easier to handle. This is my loop thread over on my left, my needle thread over on my right. I go under that little half stitch in between my, my needle thread and my loop thread and just pull it tight. I'm almost done, a couple more. But see, all of that thread makes a nice little tassel hanging down. And what, I think I'll stop now because I wanna wrap the tassel. Maybe one more? No, I think I'll stop. No, I think I'll do one more. <laughs> you want to leave enough thread on your hanging to, to wrap the tassel, you know, like a, the band at the top, but I think I can do that. I think I have enough. So there's my last knot. Then I pull my tassel down this way, and I have my thread on my needle. I just pull my tassel, kind of comb it out a little. And not all my loops are the same length, but that's okay. Generally, if they come down to the end of the book, I'm okay. And then, to make that little loop up at the top, I see one of my knots got a little down, but it, that's okay because we're going to wrap it anyway kind of hold it there and just make a little get a hold of my needle here and not the thread and I actually went under that um do I want to pull that yeah I think I no I don't I went under my this was got a little loose up here at the top but I think it'll be okay uh -uh. I just want to get under my tassel and not the binding thread here. So I just kind of come in and wrap it around like you would a tassel. And this way, I, I the same thread that I used for binding my journal is also used for the tassel. Now, if you're going to work in your journal with art and stuff, you may not want to do this, but I'm going to write in this. I'm going to scribble. And so it doesn't really matter to me. Let's see. I Now I'm just going to make a little knot in it. Just kind of knot it up here. However you wish. And let's pull a... Well, let's just pull it through and make a, another knot. My thread is kind of twisting on me. I've twisted it so many times. There's a knot. Now, sometimes, not all the time, there's the phone. It'll ring several times. I'm not going to mute. It'll just ring four or five times. I'm going to go up through that knot to the top or close to the top. 
and then I'm going to go back down and it doesn't you know you just play it by ear at this point and then I'll cut this part off and that's how much thread I had left out of that big long long piece now let's just trim our I call it giving the tassel a haircut we want it back down to about down to there. If you pull it tight, it'll be shorter. So just kind of and just trim it. And then you can make a little mini tassel out of this. I'm not going to because it's getting late. I'll do that later. And here's my journal. Now, one thing I like to do, what time is it? I've still got 10 minutes about. One thing I like to do for my closure and I'll tell you what will be great for it is, <laughs> I threw it, oh, let me, let me step here. I pushed my stitching stuff way to the outside of the aisle because I'm going to take it out in the living room, but I need to, I want something off of it. Hold on, I'm here. I'm coming back. I just have to. I have to jump over these boxes that I put in the doorway. <laughs> I'm going to use this for closure. And hopefully it'll be strong enough, especially if I double it. I don't know. Let's pull on it and see. No, it's not going to be strong enough. I pulled that right apart. That's not going to make a good closure. So forget that. I'll, you, I'll, I was going to couch around it. Let's see. Let's find a good closure behind me. What did I do? Oh, I wrapped all that stuff up. I need a good closure. Um, I don't want to go back to my... I don't want to step around that stuff again. Let's see what I have here. Hold on. I've got all kind of stuff behind me. I've got all kinds of stuff. I'm going to, I'm going to dye some fabric, tea dye some fabric. I might tea dye some of that. That might make a pretty closure. And I got this purple mite too. Let's play with that. Let's see which one I like. I think I like the purple, but I don't know. It might, it might not be good. This, this I'm going to tea dye, I think. It's. It's not a bright green, but I think it'll be pretty tea dyed. I think I think I'll try this satiny. This is li lining, satiny lining. Oh, I don't know. If I cut it wide enough, it might. I get this stuff at the thrift store. I don't buy this stuff brand new. I don't. What would happen if you tea dye satin? this silky polyester satin i think i might cut a piece and try to tea dye it or walnut dye it walnut dye i wonder if it will take it or if it'll resist it my initial reaction is that it'll resist it and i don't think i can rip this i don't think it has a weave that i can rip so i'm going to put it like this and what i want are my scissors? I had them. I had those big scissors out. Did I throw them on the tray? I've got my little scissors here. But I thought I had my big scissors. Hold on. Let's use these. So let's just take more snips. And I'm going to cut it because I'm thinking that as I pull on it, it will kind of roll up. Let's come from this side let me flip this and I buy this fabric in the thought that I'm going to use it for slow stitching and and crafts and stuff I don't buy this to make garments out of I'm not a garment maker like Becky is Becky makes clothes Mary makes messes and I'm just going to trim off about an inch and a half thereabouts 
We're going to see how this works. I don't know if it'll work or not. And I'm going to cut off the square here and throw it in that walnut die. And see how it takes the die. Maybe not a square. Maybe I'll just cut off a piece of that and throw it in. And see how it takes the die. I have a feeling that it will resist the die. Uh, it doesn't, I don't think it has a sizing to it. But it's silky. It's polyester. Which probably has a an artificial base to it. Put that behind me. And let's grab, let's grab the walnut die. I've still got a few minutes before the TV goes on. Let's just take a snip of this and throw it in here and see how it dies. And let me poke it down. Oh, it might take it. It, it will discolor it. It may not completely dye it, but it will discolor it. Let's, I'll leave this until Sunday night. This is Friday morning. And Sunday night we will see how those died. Now the last thing I'm going to do, my brother's getting ready to turn on the TV here. Hold on. The last thing I'm going to do is thread this, and I might have to snip off the ends, but I like to thread it through the ends here, like divided approximately in half. I always get in a hurry at the end here, because I know the TV is going to go on. <laughs> thread it through this way, get in there, and I always loosen it up if I do this, but Come on, Mary. Thread it through this way and back again. Yeah, he's in a hurry out there. He's going to miss the shouting, hello, shouting. Thread it through here. Where's the other one? here thread it through come on get in there quick thread it through there so I have it kind of wrapped around now in some of my larger journals I pulled it right through I'll do it later um, but I, I loop it around in here. Yeah, I pulled it right out. Hold on. I must have threaded it through the same side. There. Like that. Now, I need more, though. Hold on. Get it even. like that and you can tie a knot here if you want kind of holds it together like that close up your journal and I, this is way too long but for right now it'll do like this give it a tie like that sort of it's way too big. I'll probably clip off some or you can tuck it under. I'll play with that later. But you get the general idea. So there's my little scribble journal with a tassel even. Shake it out. And open it up. Open it up this way and there we go. So I'll be writing in here. me my brother's out there patiently waiting for me to get done bless his heart bless his heart there we go so i'll take a i'll take a 
thumbnail here. Probably of this. So we did slow stitching today, and we did boral stitching, and uh, I don't know what else. And we built journals. Thank you guys for coming. It's two minutes until 10. Thank you for sharing your Friday morning with me. Um, today is Friday. I know uh, Stacy Catitude is probably on. Uh, Barb Owen will be on this afternoon at 2 Eastern. Art Junkie comes on at uh, 3 p.m. Eastern. Am I missing anybody? I come on at 7.30 Central. Who am I missing? I think that's all I know for now. So have a great day. Have a good Friday. I will see you tonight. Can I turn? Bye. Yes. Bye.